So, hey guys, do you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? I like I like your posts too when you like ask questions on YouTube and stuff like Thanks. in the community. I I yeah. interact with those. Thank you. I'm I appreciate not subscribed, yeah. so I don't see them. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> those those kind of I've, I've flagged Dude, I Jules for copy by every time. I hate you so much, Connor. Yeah, he's using my likeness. I'm not okay with this. Uh, I click on like, like I click on Dano's like Fast and Furious stuff. Half the time I'm listening to it and I'm like I don't understand what is going on, but I'm gonna like it. I love that like Jules doesn't like know it. if I'm kidding or not. I don't know if you're kidding. And, like, using your likeness. Well, I didn't even get two of their likenesses for the last episode. Thank you very much, Ooh, guys, burn. for the. Uh, Really great recordings I got for both of those, and then, uh... I said I was sorry! I'm not even talking about you, and yet... Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind, then. We do good oh, work here. ouch. Guys! Really? I am really sorry about... that unsubscribed just... button in the chat like that? That's cool. I did just unsub <laughs> for the... I, I unsubbed for the joke, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. All right, everybody in the comments down below, uh, give Connor some shit. That's all I want out of this. The previous Are episode. Are they not already? Why aren't they already? Please do. I miss being on YouTube. Can you just personally watch, attack me in the also comments, Also watch please? the video completely till the end. Because yeah. I feel like that, that, that makes, that does stuff, right? Like, well, I know yeah. People, can't you see, like, how... watch time how, better, yeah. Can't you mm -hmm. see how long people watch oh, yeah, yeah, the video? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, most of the people, people leave after the first videos. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that. And then... I love YouTube metrics are crazy because 75% of views come from people that aren't actually subscribed to the channel. And I don't understand how that happens when we're on episode six and you're still watching. So I don't understand how we get there. YouTube but, uh, does a good job at if you're consistent yeah. at watching it. Yeah, they just like just put it showing up there. It to you. Yeah. So you're I'm really bad at subscribing to channels, yeah, which yeah. is ironic. It's so weird. Has to people to do it. So but if you stop videos. watching, it will stop showing it to you. So please subscribe. <laughs> and all all I do have to say is that I do appreciate the YouTube algorithm for actually pushing stuff. That's great. Love that. I yeah. wish yeah, other platforms did that well. Uh, but hi, yeah, also, welcome. Less business talk. Sorry, Cat. I was gonna say I like the longer videos. Yeah. <laughs> No. I like long just videos. Just in general. These are three okay, hours. Just in general. So she'll watch anything. <laughs> she'll yeah. watch anything. Just yeah. make it long, okay. everyone. Paint drying, grass growing. Okay. Yeah. So okay, these, like, hour-long videos have about 70% ads, right? Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Brand, I feel a little called out, okay? <laughs> I... I may have... Uh -huh. Multiple occasions watched, like, you know, grass or paint drying. Ah, oh, okay. See, so sometimes it's that's a so soothing weird. thing. You shaving know, like, soap? Shaving, shaving soap's soap? That's, yeah, that's... Or man. the most satisfying, the most satisfying thing, like videos, like, yes, on the, the, the internet or whatever compilations those of yeah. just yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hydraulic course. press videos. Yeah, yep, that's I'm great. into it. Love that. Um, well, hey, stick around for three hours of D&D, &D, or at least today it was going to be roughly two and a half-ish, but hi! Welcome to Diefall Presents Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Uh, it's episode seven right i think Holy so said six? yeah i said six but it's seven because i haven't i've been working on six this morning so i have that mm. on my brain um which will be posted before this airs get, obviously. i don't think you're supposed to touch things to your brain that's can't be healthy all right anyways <laughs> we did I some stuff wrinkles out. and some things in <laughs> <iron> the wrinkles <laughs> i thought that you get the wrinkles out when you blow your nose Okay. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we went on a little adventure. Our first mission relayed to us by Derrett for the city uh, of Kalamon, who is housing all of the refugees from Vogler, uh, our volunteer force, somewhat conscripted mm -hmm. force of heroes, were sent to find a gnomish inventor named Tatina Rukuldust. Uh, we ran into some dragon army soldiers, had a little bit of a battle there, some hobgoblins, and otherwise it seems that the dragon army has uh, started at least some forays into the the region here, in addition to making our way to Tatina Rukul Dust's actual workshop. Um, here's that picture once again because it's really fun and it has flying mechanical things uh, shooting mm -hmm. out acidic eggs. It's a good one. Yeah, we battled some goblins. It went really quickly, and it, it, it all went well. And turns out Tatina built the mechanical dragon thing that torched Vogler and almost killed all of our friends. Anyway, yeah, she calls it a, a weed eater. So mm -hmm. it was supposed to just clear some grass, and it turns out she sold it to the uh, dragon army. 
she says unknowingly about the consequences thereof, and having met her, not overly surprising. She seems rather scatterbrained and uh, brain moving faster than her body possibly can keep up with. Liquid uh, meth. Yeah, we've retrieved her. She is to serve as somewhat of an advisor for potential uh, mechanical things like this to Kalamon. We began our return back to the city proper. On that return, however, we ran into an old friend, reunited with Cudgel and what remains, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Ironclad Regiments, which is roughly 30 soldiers. Still, well, we almost got friendly fired. Almost got friendly fired because one of us is wearing Dragon Army soldier <laughs> armor and tabards. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> still conspicuously missing, however, is Becklin Uth Viharan. We'll have to see uh, if she ever is found or is alive. But as of right now, Cudgel has uh, told us that she, she was indeed captured at some point and there was no getting her back at the time. But that's that's where we begin. We just, we're still walking back, or reuniting with Cudgel, <clears throat> excuse me, occurring. And oh yeah, it's just been raining the whole time. <laughs> Rain and has just been say, coming down the whole time. Gloomy and frequent rains. Lots and lots of rain. Lots and right? lots of Seattle, rain. Seattle, Washington. Seattle, yeah. Washington. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the southern rise to the Dargard Mountains is constantly cloaked in dark clouds that often spread their gloom across the surrounding land. Uh, there is some, like, rumors as to why that is, but in reality, it's just, it sees frequent rain and is generally gloomy. It's not like a cursed darkness or anything like that. Okay, me too. Yeah, I'm also that. Uh, so we'll be continuing back to Kalamon here. Um, is there anything that you want to ask of of Cudgel or our two gnomish compatriots before we return to, to Kalamon? Did you already say, do we know where they're coming from? Uh, so they... I did not say that here, but she did yeah. uh, iterate at least that they had uh, basically taken a roundabout way across the river to then get to Kalamon to try and throw off some of the dragon army pursuers uh, from their rear. Because they look, they look pretty beat up, right? Yes, they do look uh, pretty significantly injured and tired. Um, <clears throat> it's quite clear they're exhausted and they saw a battle pretty, pretty recently. Some are still being, like, carried on, on horses or stretchers. Hmm. I don't know what my character would ask, but he'd want to ask, like, what happened? Sure. Ah, uh, well, the Vogler assault was a little rough for us. We had dug in pretty deep, and well, we made a, a good fight of it. And um, I believe I, I mentioned before that a group stepping out of these blue portals up on the hill bought us some time to beat a bit of a retreat. Um, we didn't really get to keep up with them too much, but one of their representatives, a, a tiefling, uh, said that they would go after Becklin for us. I, I don't really know who they are, but they went and bought us some time to get the hells away. So, pretty thankful about that whole thing. Um, we skirted around, went west of Vogler into the hinterland, and basically forded across the river the best that we could, uh, using our horses and trees tied together and things like that, swiftly as possible. And then we've been making our way back eastward here, trying to keep it as roundabout as possible. This is the first time we've been on a road in quite some time. So travel's been hard and rather harried. There are quite a few dragon forces around here. I, I don't know if you've seen them, but it seems they've already been on the south side in the East Wilds already. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we got some losers behind us that they're, they're gone now. Mm. I cut, I cut one straight in half. It was pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> um, we've also found that it, it seems there are quite a few mercenary camps and bandits as well in the area. I sent some scouts out to kind of test the waters there. It seems that they're joining up with the Dragon Army. Dragon Army pays pretty well. Just unfortunate. Um, I'm kind of out of cash and strapped, so I'm hoping Kalaman will hire us <laughs> and house us. 
Uh, you, know, you can come stay with me in the in the the sheep pen. I'd rather listen to perhaps what Razik was about to say rather than <laughs> sleeping in the stable. Well, I was just I was just curious. You mentioned that group with the blue portals. I... There was a, a tiefling with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been led to believe that my my people are kind of rare in in and these parts. Yeah, yes, <laughs> and I was mighty surprised to see them. They had elves among them as as well, and it was a curious group. They well, they helped us, and I'm I'm, I'm not going to argue too much with it. But you're not too sure who they are or anything like that? I didn't even get names. We just took advantage of the situation and got the hells out. Okay. But hopefully they follow through on that. They went in pursuit of Becklin and the arrests that were potentially captured. And I mean, they look to be as well equipped as, as you all are for adventurers. Uh, anyway. Speaking of which, yes. I'm going to take this time to change out of the armor before we get to town. <laughs> Good idea. I had a reason for doing this. I know it seems really dumb. <laughs> there was a reason, I swear. This will be useful but, uh, at some point, I swear. I swear. <laughs> is the uh, reason but... still there? or is it... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Are, is anybody in the trees? I'd like to roll a perception check. <laughs> Sure, go for it. Roll me perception oh, in the gloom of, of the rain. For... I right, look at the trees. Yeah. I was kind of joking. The whole dragon army is in a tree. They're all next there. <laughs> a 20 on the perception uh, check. 20? Reveals so many dragons. No, no, no. Uh, it's, it's gloomy. <laughs> okay. It's kind of, you know, it's dreary. There ain't nobody around. <laughs> it's just you guys right, right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you get some help taking off the, uh, the armor there and changing back into your Salomnic Order armor, which makes sense. Arriving back to Kalabad in the black and red of the dragon army may not be the best decision. Uh, especially with a, a force the size that you have now, which is roughly 40 people. So, yeah, yeah, we need to kind of make good on, on that, I think. Um, yeah, any other questions for your compatriots or as we move forward here or until we arrive at Kalabad? Ravenna will still be uh, sniffling, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she's still a little sick. Still oh. A little sick from a little uh, sick. being in being in the rain. Yeah, it uh, the rain does clear as we continue northwards, at least, and the sounds of the river do greet us as we make our way closer to Kalaman proper. Uh, Kalaman is at this point you can see well guarded. The walls crawl with guards and lookouts. Well, as each of the gates are well manned rather than just having two potential guards at uh, at the gate itself there are now 10 stationed outside uh, each of them checking for people trying to enter the town uh, for credentials and evaluating things like wagons um <clears throat> any covered carriages and things of that nature to ensure that there's no one attempting to sneak in as well to harm anyone inside there is uh, a bit of a, well, a s hustle towards your people by these guards as they note a rather large armed force approaching, as wouldn't you know, be surprising to anyone involved in this situation. Uh, yeah, so from that point, you would be greeted by 10 guards, weapons kind of at the ready there, and one of the grizzled gentlemen looking up at you all and Right, so I'm gonna need to see either some identification or, you know, state your business here. We're not really in the business of letting in a whole bunch of armed folk. But we're returning on behest of the council, actually. Uh, I see that, Adam. And that. <laughs> we were sent to uh, the south to, to retrieve uh, a certain person of high value, and I'm sure any member of the council would be able to confirm that. Yeah, one of the guards kind of leans over, gives a, a whisper to the, the man that's doing this. Right! Well, that accounts for, I think, you six. What's with the rest of this lot? Uh, part of the group from Vogler. These were the brave souls who actually stayed to do somewhat of an attempt at fighting them off and have only just made their way here. Yeah. Uh, from her seated position on her pony, she'll, like, give you a pat on the shoulder here, and she'll hop off uh, the horse there and, and move forward. 
Cudgel, Iron Smile, uh, leader of this here brigade. Yes, uh, we helped out at, at Vogler and have eventually made our way here, and we are looking to work here and perhaps get hired for the impending war? At least that's what it seems. <laughs> and he'll give them the look. Right. Well, the majority of this lot has to stay out here until it's confirmed, but you, if you're representing them, you can head on inside and up to the castle. He'll look at you all. If you're representatives of the council, I suggest you get her situated. Hmm? Where would that be situated? Aye, I, I... if they're looking to work for Kalamon, you gotta take her up to the, uh, early old castle there and get them signed oh. on. I'm not letting in that's... 30 armed soldiers until no, no, that's no, of done. of course, that's just a, you know, that's a somewhat novel use of the word situated, but okay, yes, sure. Maybe we can do that. Yeah, he'll nod. He goes, right. Now you lot. He'll gesture to the 30 others. Set up camp out here. You're fine. Hopefully they'll be back with work for you. And they'll allow you all to enter into Kalamon proper once again. Good. Paperwork. Paperwork. Yeah. Uh, and I think Cudgel here would look at you. Right, yes, so, um, could you perhaps get me situated and us, uh, with a meeting? Whoever we need to talk to about getting hired on here? Yeah, I- they seemed very eager to get you hired and situated. I thought they'd be a bit more of a pleasantry, but, um, yes, I suppose but we'll take you to the council chambers, They do right? seem a little bit stressed out. Am I the only one noticing that? No, that's it true. It could be the armies that are, you know, wandering around causing trouble. I think that makes people a little unsound. Could well be. Yes, right. I'm, Sarcasm I'm isn't appreciated. I'm actually stress. <laughs> I've gone so stressed that I'm around the other side and I'm actually feeling okay about it. Hey, that's a great way to look at it. How, how have you been doing anyways? You know, you've been holding up pretty good? Anyone giving you trouble about, you know, calling down moon fire from the sky? Oh, you know, oh, yeah. um, some of them. Some of them are dead, who did, which is good. Um, ah, <laughs> good for you! Yes, no, some people have been noticing. I'm just sort of hoping, yes, in regards to the whole, you know, dragon army advance everywhere's on fire, all that sort of stuff. Um, it might slip out the back of their mind somewhat, maybe? Ah, we can always hope, huh? How's the, hmm. um, the rest of the people of Vogler? I see you've got, um, old, uh, Tiny over here and his spiders, but, uh, what about the rest of the lot? Did they all make it out? Or did we... Did we do our job? Yes, they, they seem to be doing all right. Uh, all I think the vast outside. majority of people I, I managed to escape by, yeah. Where are they they're on the, is it the southeast side? Oh, good. Uh, they are on... That's the Warrior's Gate, right? They're actually Trade Gate. Uh, oh, up the in the, the northwestern side, just outside the Trade Gate, where these conglomerate of three I, I couldn't have been are. wronger. I said southeastern, and it's northwestern. <laughs> Uh, we would have entered from the southeastern gate just now. So mm. they would be on the opposite side of the city. Oh, that's good. That's, uh, I'm glad we didn't lose most of the regiment for nothing, you know? Um, that's good. I, I, I hope we can do some good here for Kalamon as well. Um, uh, and Darrett, did he, uh, I, I, Becklin was pretty worried about him. <laughs> oh, wait till you see him. <laughs> kind of like look at Ravenna. What? Inside. <laughs> yes. All right. Um. I, she she kind of chuckles, but it's like it's she's like. <laughs> but it's just it's just it's like. Sniffed <laughs> wheat completely through the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think the last person is a. Uh, well, my second. Um, did my lieutenant ever make it to you? What was his name again? I can't bloody remember. <laughs> I was going to say Joseph or Jorkel or something. Joseph <laughs> or Jorkel? Jorkel. I like Jorkel. Uh, JF? JF! Jorkel! Was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> I love Jorkel. Like I said, <laughs> Joseph and Did Snorkel? Snorkel. Oh, she's <laughs> she's concerned like about his death and things like Jorkel. And I love it because it's like... <laughs> Jorkel? Right. I'm, I'm taking that name. For another character, uh, by the way. Yeah, Jayev. Did he, um... He, he made it to you all with the... Well, with the helm, right? Uh, oh, he did, he did, he did. I, he did, didn't he? Jo he jumped on the boat just as we were leaving. Oh, good. All right, the one that I got it. Yep. Taking over, right. putting down. 
Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. Um, do you know where he's at? In the city, or... I would love to catch up with him after we get this business done. I don't think we... I think we've seen him amongst the, the people. I don't think recently, though, have we? Uh, not in the last couple of days. Also, we've been gone. Mm -hmm. No yeah. worries. No, she's just asking. All right, well, I'll uh, come to the city and see if I can't find him. Uh, so who do we go talk to about getting the regiment all signed up here? Spurtle just um, points points at the castle. Yeah, the castle on the hill. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to scope <laughs> out. I'll place. scope out to see if there's any like armored guards, like groups of them or something like that. You know, like like a like a sign up kind of like post or something. A sign up post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a wanted po a poster. Yeah, it's one like of the, a, uh, the that or like one of those like um like the, booths like a, or like I guess like tables information or whatnot. Kiosk? For, uh, <laughs> information kiosk. Information kiosk. Like a um, like a mall. What is it? A, Conscription here. Like a sure. bar mercenary yeah. sign up I here. Think... Yeah, I, so oh, yeah, there, army there recruiters. Help wanted. <laughs> we would be looking for um, Governor Hayloth, correct? Which is the ruler of Kalaman. He'd probably be the best one to speak to. Right? Marshal Vendry is currently the person that is in charge of making all of the military things happen and is Derrett's commanding officer. Uh, Understood. Okay. Marshal Vendry would be the person to probably talk to about this. But if you wanted to talk to, uh, you know, the recruiters, you could. Because as you do move through the city, you see a couple of things. Uh, there are a lot more guard patrols throughout the uh, the city proper here. In addition to posters that are that were made and look like the giant statues that line the walls of Kalamon with just like a we want you for Kalamon's military with a statue like pointing down at whoever this person might be. And yes, there it's are time recruitment to stations. Call to arms for call <laughs> it's time to I'm call on. all men for Kalamon. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. The recruiting Absolutely. campaign isn't going well. It's yeah. not really great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's pretty clever. Look, it's it's uh, to, you know, it could be better. Call uh, call him call him call a man to join the Kalamon military. Yeah, call a okay. man I, to join Kalamon. I quit this campaign. I know. <laughs> oh come on, that was a good one. Ch all right, please put please put in the chat if that was good or not. All right, come on. <laughs> next, right, next, right what me. you're gonna you're gonna one spell combat ten. with a K chat, like this thinks, is Mortal Kombat? She thinks we're live. She's lost it. <laughs> She's it's totally lost it. <laughs> the, the call it's, it's affecting the brain. <laughs> the five G. The five G. <laughs> Each of these giant statues uh, around the walls is uh, has also a five G emitter. Hopefully, this messes with the flight patterns of the dragons that are yet to come. Uh, <laughs> That being said, yes, we can head up to Castle Kalamon and actually get them conscripted. Jesus. Oh, You're just as bad as us. Why am I even I'm trying anymore? I'm so glad anymore? my armor's made of shungite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's actually why we kept all of the uh, the Dragon Army armor, is that it's all solid <laughs> shungites. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, fuck it. We walk through the town. We go past the conscription stations. We go talk to the person who's actually in charge of this situation. Uh, as you make your way up to the, the gates here, you'd be allowed in by the guards. They are expecting your arrival. Uh, as you do now live here, so that's a whole thing as well. Um, and you make your way inside towards uh, Marshal Vendry's office. So as you get there, you would find Marshal Vendry kind of bent over what looks to be large lists of things, more than likely preparing in some way for, I don't know, the war that is ahead. Uh, a small knock on the door by the guard that is leading you around would allow you inside, as she says, enter, uh, and she would look up from her desk and Ah, good, you've returned. Um, hopefully with, uh, Rukul Dust in tow, and, uh, well, who's that with you there? She, you know, gestures over to Cudgel. Well, I'm, I'm Cudgel, <laughs> Iron Smile. Uh, I lead the, uh, well, a, a small, now, mercenary force, uh, and, well, we were fighting in Vogler before these folk got everyone out, and we're hoping to maybe pick up a little bit of work here and get some rest and food and bandages if you'll have us. We've got about 30-some-odd well-trained, seasoned soldiers left, and, um, well, after a bit of downtime, we could, uh, I think we could really help you out. We've got quite a bit of information, having battled the Dragon Army before, and I, I think we could be useful to the cause here. 
and she'll... I will I will step in front of Cudgel and I will say they are good fighters and good people. Hmm. It would be a mistake to allow them to walk. Oh, no, no, no. I have no intention of letting that happen. We can use as many fighters as possible, especially skilled ones. The amount of spears I'm placing into untrained hands this day alone has got me a bit frightened about things to come. We could use some of those soldiers either for uh, missions ahead, or if you think they're better suited to training, conscripts, we could probably use the help there as well. Um, I will look to a cudgel and I will go. Should we see if some of your lot would be allowed to train? Fine. Split up the effort. I would like to keep them together as much as possible. Um, but we do need a couple of days of downtime first. Uh, Marshal Vendry, you know, just thanks for a moment. <laughs> well, you said you fought in Vogler. You know, Derrett's been given a command. Perhaps we can bolster some of his forces with your own. Keep the Voglerites together in that regard. A lot of those refugees from Vogler, after a bit of rest and some training, have decided to take up the spear for themselves. We could work there, too. And Cudgel will immediately start nodding. So, right, yes, I, I mean, that's the whole reason we're in this business anyway, so... Um, Derek's got a command! And she looks around at you all. Oh, dear. <laughs> that's incredible! How did he... That little tight got a command! Hey, I don't think they grow up so fast these days. Oof. This lion cub is indeed lion accelerating. Lion cub? That's, that's cute. I, I wouldn't have called him a lion in any way, but yeah, I think, I think he's going to need all the help he can get. Well, that's why you are here. Aye, that's why we, And then I will right, smile and nod. Are here? Right, yeah, um, Marshall. She'll, she'll give a kind of a half bow. Uh, yes, uh, I've got 30 soldiers. I'll get you their names. Um, and skills and all that, and, uh, if you could set us up somewhere we can get rested and rebuilt and situated, then we'll be right as rain and ready to go. There's something about my boys, it's, uh, we'll be ready soon. The marshal will nod and she'll... Right. Well, you can stay here, Cudgel. Uh, the rest of you, if you'd like to get some rest, that's good. Uh, and leave, um, Tatina here as well, if you don't mind. She's... Tatina's just been ignoring everyone and has been writing in her notebook the entirety of the time we've been making our way back. So most Tatina of it is, is a wet, smudgy thing. With, well, with all due respect, Marshal Vendry, hmm. if you don't mind if we stay for this uh, particular conversation, we also have uh, quite a bit of information that I think that you would be interested in with in regards to the fight that happened whilst picking up. Right. All right. Well, um, come, uh, sit down. I, I don't have too many chairs. It's a bit of a small office, but please give your report then. We go through a detailed, uh, report of the creatures that we encountered, as mm -hmm. well as the amount of forces that, uh, the dragon army had mm -hmm. and how many we were able to defeat. Uh, we do explain that some, unfortunately, uh, got away in the fight. Uh, we explain the direction that they ran. And uh, I will leave some of the details up to Titania. Titania? Within, or Titina. Yeah. We're all just fudging names. <laughs> what are yeah. names anyway? It's not as bad as Jorkle. It's not Garrett, as bad as Jorkle. Garrett. <laughs> Garrett. <laughs> it's Girl, don't make us bring up funny names that you've said in okay. the past. Okay. I think we know which one wins. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I hate random name What's generators. Uh, oh, you'll find it one day. No! I'm good. At, uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> All right. Uh, a, a lot of the, the details of like the surrounding area would be uh, supplemented by Cudgel and basically telling you or telling um, her what she had told you on the way back, which is like there are these other mercenary companies that are looking to join up with the Dragon Army that they're seemingly paying rather well, uh, and that there are these draconic, uh, forces that are about as well. Um, that the uh, dracon- yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, we'll also note too that we did make sure to pretty much burn down- for, Yeah, all of Tatina's stuff. Unfortunately, yeah. because like, uh, for, you know, tactical reasons, and we did discuss, and we'll even state too that we did let 
them we did let her know that we were going to be doing it yeah you're also and carrying her things so yeah so we're just <laughs> so like oh, yeah. after after the report Ravenna just goes and we burned down her house oh that's right they burned down my house which I think was probably not the right decision, but it was the decision at the time, and now all of my things are here, so I'm going to need a place to stay. Somewhere inside it, the castle would be more preferable. If you've got a place to set up a workshop, that would be really tactical. great. Uh, and then I need somewhere to put all talking. of my alchemical equipment to set up here, because i got to get my drinks going here, and then... To prevent the enemies from gathering any sort of plans or schematics that may hinder us in the battle to come. Yeah, Tatina just as, as rambles she's, she's over. Just going, still going and then she's just like very like low like bellowing and like <laughs> slow talking and with uh, that right, being said right, i would like to offer right. my services as her personal bodyguard i personal body would be remiss if that anything happened to tina um no no there's no she'll be set up here in castle Kalamon. the castle itself actually has plenty of space and well, we are filling quickly with the new conscripts there is still some basement portions that are well equipped to handle whatever things Tatina needs to set up. No, she will be well accommodated, well guarded. Do not ma do not worry. Castle Kalamon is the safest place in the city. I don't expect we'll be utilizing her on the front lines anytime soon. <clears throat> Marshal Bendry, what I mean is I think she might need additional supervision. <clears throat> ah. Well, in that case, um... She looks around and Van has just kind of been behind the tree trunk legs uh, of the twin or of the the siblings this whole time, and and who's that there then? Oh, um, <laughs> it's then, not then. Um, I could potentially help out uh, with Tatina and uh, making sure everything is ship shape, um, chip chop. Some, something, uh, Miss Marshall, uh, sir, ma'am, sir, uh, the Marshall will lean in again to Raina here. Would that be good enough? I get the feeling you're going to be rather indisposed for a few days here if what I've heard from Derrett is anything. Just somebody to, hmm, balance her inventions. They tend to skew towards more dangerous avenues well, they seem mundane it is quite the opposite if i'm to be honest um we could probably use dangerous understood but her machinations should be conducted and toyed with outside the borders oh i, I, of I the walls. i'll make sure that um Again, everything is with supervision. Is all of course. good, and um, uh, perhaps if there's a, you know, uh, some guards that want to supervise us, that's fine. Or are you friends here? Uh, I could keep an eye on her. She's um. Look again over to the corner. And Tatina's just sketching furiously something in this book. I, well, I can help. I think she is but a baby viper. Baby viper. Pretty apt to Small, actually. small, cute, and harmless. Until? But bite is still very venomous, uh. even deadly. We'll keep it under control and maybe perhaps put her in one of the more remote locations of the basement wings. I think that might give her enough space there. And then, if you don't mind, perhaps you can assist in getting Tatina settled. And then I think... The council may have a job for both of you, if you're up to it. And he'll nod. And, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I can definitely do that. Isn't that right, Tatina? She goes, hmm. <laughs> Just keeps scribbling down in the book. That's um, a yes, I think. <sighs> right. Well, for you all, Cudgel and I will hash out the details here. Go get yourselves washed up. Get some rest. And in the morning, well... I'll let Derrett fill you in on it, but we have a mission for you. So, you're dismissed, and thank you once again. Food will be brought up to your chambers, don't worry. And of course, if there's anything you need to do in Kalamon tonight, absolutely, go get it done. You're dismissed. 
Uh, should we girlfriend. leave Tatina's uh, uh, stuff? Girlfriend. What was that, Razik? Uh, should we leave Tatina's stuff here? Or stay with us? It's fine. I'll have some of the guards move it downstairs. You can just yeah, drop it Sparta here. would have dropped it. Yeah, just clank, crunch. <laughs> the smashing sound of glass on the ground as some <laughs> just... of the flasks get broken. <clears> hmm. <throat> right. Yeah, you are dismissed. Uh, and with that, what uh, what do you all want to do? Well, I mean, I will wait until people start heading off, and I will, I will head t towards Wine's apothecary at this point. Okay. Um. So you want to try and surreptitiously get away without? I'm not alerting. surreptitiously leaving, but I'm just kind of waiting to see what other people do. Sure. I mean, what is the rest of the group doing? You're just going up to the rooms to take a, a rest, or? Yeah, I thought uh, Razik would probably just head back to the room and sure. chill. Okay. Yeah. As much as 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 much as my out of care out of character wants to partake in this, my <laughs> inner character could not could, does not You're really sick. care. It's time so. to go take a nap. Yes. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My inner character, actual character, is going to <laughs> quite literally, probably not sneakily, just kind of watch. <laughs> We're gonna just, watch him. <laughs> I just <laughs> because funnels there like. <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, it's muscle. Oh, I... It's easy. I'm doing the whole. If I don't move, he can't see me. But obviously. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll just wait until like everyone else clears out. And I was yeah. like, Rain, are you going muscle, you... to the room? Oh, Sorry. Yeah, Rain, are you going to go up to the room as well, or do you have other business? Uh, I'd like to find a bathhouse, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a, a bathing chamber in Castle Kalamon. Uh, if you want to use that, or are you looking for a, like just like oh, a like bathhouse? Oh, like a fancy things? bath chamber? No, Ooh, you know like what? where the guards and stuff go bathe because they <laughs> oh. live here in the barracks. Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to bathe or stinky guards bathe. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find a nice a bathhouse bath house. with like a little old lady that runs it. And yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, so you'll head out into uh, Kalamon proper to go search for that and split ways uh, with. With who who's coming out now? Gonna be <laughs> gonna be Svartle, uh and Talonor as you exit I'll out. I'll just look towards yeah. Svartle yeah. before we leave and be like, Svartle, I I really can't be bothered trying to go down any other route, so I'm just going to say, would you like to come with me? Yeah, yeah, I want. Yeah, I want to come. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Come on. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'll be quiet. I think, it's, I think it's a bit of a walk through the city. I've got a vague idea of where it is, but. Okay. So you oh, walk. Uh, yeah, go ahead. He, Svartle would know where it is. Yeah, Svartle oh. studied that map. He goes, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, I got oh, it. Yeah, that's right. I, I know where we're going. <laughs> yeah, so Svartle, you okay. take the lead <laughs> in getting him there to Wyan's apothecary. Also, while we're walking there, I will be like, Svartle, just so you understand, I know uh, jokes are all good and fun and stuff, but this is actually something that is, is very, very dangerous for me. I'm not sure if you understand the situation. That's why I'm here. What do you mean? Well, I suppose that is a good point. But yes, um, technically I should be, I don't want to say under the control of, but um, technically I should be uh, reporting in to a certain group of people that maybe I have done um, somewhat of a avid job avoiding in recent times. And um, people who do that tend to be uh, typically a little bit hunted down, I suppose is the word I'd use. So, hmm. yes, it may go poorly. If it does, uh, your help would be most appreciated. Um, yes, I suppose the, the, the signal would be if we start trying to kill each other. So. Mm, I'll try to, I'll try to remember. I, I don't pick up on clues very well, but I'll, I'll try. But you're, a f well, I mean, the sort of, the fireballs and the, the lightning and the screaming will be a good, mm. good indicator. Kind of a normal day for me, but all right. Very true, actually. Very astute, Spartle. But yes, um, well, I suppose you're a fantastic deterrent, so do please feel free to loom over. It would be most welcome. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Looming. He's so good at looming. He is, <laughs> he's looming. a big boy. Even yeah. to me, he's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're quickly led to Wine's Apothecary down a couple of these side roads in Castle Kalamon. Um, the and I will just say once more before we, we head up, I'll just be like, Battle, the people we're going to be dealing with are immensely dangerous, so let me speak to them at first, because 
This could go wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't talk much, but uh, you know that's I'm true. not scared. But when you do talk, it tends to be high impact, you know. So that's just try to be careful. <laughs> words you say very important words, Svartal. Very very good at saying important things. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Indeed. Wine's right. apothecary is a rather green building. Gardens out front, trees, and gardens inside. A small bell tinkles as you enter the apothecary proper. And for some of my players, this room is going to appear black. But for the rest of you, Svartal and Talonor, you are in said apothecary. It smells of licorice and pepper. Modest shop has a few meager tables displaying good luck charms, odd animal bones, and vials advertising various remedies. At the rear of the shop, a human woman with raven hair and a dark dress with feathered wing-like sleeves stands behind a counter heaped with open books. She looks up from her reading, eyes you with slight disinterest, and looks back down. I believe my letter said for you to come alone. Talonor Greymoon. It did, but um, my friend is very persistent and very protective. And also, he's not exactly um, interested or educated, really, in, in anything like this. So I wouldn't worry too much about him. And honestly, I feel a little bit better coming with him than alone. So, you know. Are you scared? I'm trying to think of a clever response for yes, really, but, um, well, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure that you're aware I'm not exactly in the best of standings with your lot. Indeed, you are not. I, oh, upon seeing you in the council so chamber a few days ago, did some asking around. I thought perhaps I had recognized some of the notes from, um, well, a story about someone calling down Moonfire. There's only one student in the last hundred years that has had access to that kind of ability, Talonor. And that one who, student who uh, decided that they should perhaps leave the Order of High Sorcery for some reason. She'll place her pen down and look up at you and just study you. I do have news of your father, Talonor. Oh, do you? Indeed. Let's talk about that part. He is alive, oh, is he? if it matters to you. Oh, good. Sylvanesti has to... fallen. Hmm? It's no more. I'll just stare at it. It's a land of shadow, and devils, and dragons strafing the land, pouring fire down upon it. Your father made an escape, though. Some of your familial accoutrements, I suppose been asking about you and paid a good amount of money for the mages to find you. Keep a network of sorts. He wants you to be he? returned to him. Or for you to resume your studies with the mages of high sorcery. Now I know what I would want out of this, Eleanor. A person of your abilities and pedigree would be well suited to be back with the mages. Should you be willing to give it some actual effort this time? I'll know visibly winces. All of that power, not an ounce of care, wasted on you. That's a bit harsh, but... What is- Where exactly is my father if you say he's looking for me? We can get to that after the conversation is done. What is magic to you, Greymoon? What is it? I suppose it's been somewhat of a survival mechanism in recent days. Before then, it was something I really could have done without. Do you think you're worthy of the magic that you wield? They could. Who assigns that worth, you know? You and I probably have very different opinions of what makes a person worthy of something. Your personal opinion, Talonor? Sort of down to chance, really. I don't think luck cares if you're 
worthwhile or not. I think I clearly inherited something of some form, and well, it's mine to do with it as I please, or at least it should be. Hmm. Would you change the world with your magic? Or continue this charade being someone else, someone lesser? Oh, I mean, I certainly wouldn't mind changing the world. Well, the nest is burnt to the ground, but maybe that was a good place to start. It's an old-fashioned place, really. I'd never really fit in there too much. I'm not sure how my magic would change the world, though, unless, you know, punching holes through people with moonlight is particularly diplomatic in some places, but... There is a war coming, Talanor, and I think you're already aware of it. Punching holes through people with moonlight is going to be a very needed skill in the months to come. Are you willing wrong. to utilize that for a greater good than your own personal gain? I mean, I think you know I already am. Still here, let's be honest. I can turn invisible, I can breathe underwater, I can fly, I can pretty much do whatever I want. Still here. I do followed you... this group for some reason. Followed Svartal. Yeah. She smiles Fought a little bit. Yeah. As I expected. So you do it for others, then? You stay for others? I never really thought about it that much. Just sort of did it, I suppose. Well, I'm asking you to think about it now, Talanor. I mean, I don't plan to stop. If you hadn't sent me that letter, I'd have happily continued on with my new friends, and seemingly we're doing some form of good. We helped Vogler, and, you know, I... You're the only interference in this so far. I'm not interfering, Eleanor. I am trying to bring you back to the fold. Hmm. But does that mean I'd have to go sit in a tower and study and do tests I've heard kill people and... <laughs> well, the test will come. If you choose to come back, yes, the test will happen. It happens for all of the mages of High Sorcery. Oh. You will not be yeah, locked to a tower for your studies like you were before. No, there is too great a need now for that here. I will serve as a, a proxy teacher of a sort. Well, why? And this is obviously an important question, but something I need to ask you. Which order of high sorcery are you from? What are your motives? Because oh, I know there's some difference in uh, approaches between you. Two things you never ask a woman, Talanor. Her age and what robe she wears. Kind of smiles a little bit. She displays the raven wings on her arms. Yes, I thought as much. Of course, I wear the black. I was initially supposed to go and join the Reds, I suppose, but... And you still can. I don't really, I don't really know too much about any of them, just... It does not matter who your teacher is. And I will not be your only instructor in this. Yes, you are well suited to the Reds. And they will use you, and use you well. I will contact the mages, and... If you wish petition for your inclusion back once again. Many are eager to have your powers back into the fold. Hopes that perhaps it sparks a new revolution amongst magic and utilization of the moon fire in which you have. Very well. But, why not? I must ask again, you clearly wear black robes. Indeed. You're talking about defending others and you seemingly, you seem motivated to keep me around to try and help people. That's not what I've heard of your type. I'm retired, didn't you know? Ah, of course. Morality something you can retire from? I think some would say yes. But no, Eleanor. I assure you this also serves my own interest, if that's what you're worried about. But it well, also I... serves yours. And the people of Kalamon. And no, the doesn't. mages. Hmm. Your increase in power will serve the people here. 
It's true. Well, I'll give her a, a wry smile and cock my eyebrow. And I'm going to turn to Svartal and be like, Svartal, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I mean, bad is bad. That from what I under, from what I learned. True. Good point. Bad is bad. It never mm. really becomes good. Oh. Very, very, very true, actually. I'll turn back to why I'm like, hmm. Okay. Petition your friends. But I'm not going to be any slave to any orders. No. The Reds will fit well for you, then. Allowed more leeway than many of the other orders. But with the war coming, it's... All of us will likely be called to serve in some way, including those of us that have retired. I will contact the leaders, the Tower of High Sorcery and Weyrith. Should we get the acquiescence, I will secure transport for you and whoever else you decide you want to bring along with you, and you will take your test. Very well. Until that point, the nights you find yourself in Kalaman, I ask that you come here. We're going to accelerate some of your training. Interesting. Good thing I kept that robe, eh? <laughs> yes. Have it properly prestidigitated before you are presented. The one I know how to do that. Hmm. Well, sure. that is all for me. Svartal, were you looking to purchase something? Oh, I don't really have money or anything. This is all stuff that I I miss about the forest. Look at oh. all this. There's the, the thyme and there's the mint and there's the... And he, he starts... Well, Naming all everything Every accurately all yeah. around the yeah he he knows it all. You well, know. why? And there must be some sort of signing bonus for me coming back to the, the order. I'm sure Svartal could have a couple of things here. You've got all sorts for well, the course, of course. Kalinor, your bonus is me not putting you in magical irons and shipping you off to the tower myself. Mm. Sounds mm. like a challenge. He, he Svartal would growl a little bit at that. It wouldn't be much of a challenge, my boy. Why, and I think you're also keen to get me back in the fold, because you seem a little scared of me. But very well, we don't need to test it out. Swaddle, hmm. feel free to take one of the potted plants with you if you'd like. Oh, I'm sure you'll take great care of it. Yeah, of course. Good. Thank you, Why. Hmm. All right. You... <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head, out of character, but he would sure. take the one that's least toxic to cats and other things. <laughs> sure, I don't know what that is either. <laughs> it's not mint, it's not garlic, it's a pick up a nice a leafy green thing in a pot, yeah. and we take it back, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Any other questions, Talonor? Well, I don't think so. What should I tell people? Am I... back in the club, or...? Is this our secret, or...? <sighs> that is for you to decide. But after the test, you will be a mage of high sorcery. And if you should pass, be wearing the red robes. And like all of the mages of high sorcery, you wear them proudly. So come to terms with that before the test. Hmm. I think I better start wearing the robes, I'm... Apparently drawing enough attention as it is, might as well have an excuse. Now, the last bit before I send you on your way. Your father is safe. He's in Salamnia, residing in... <laughs> At this, you see Talonor audibly breathe out. It's like, oh, I thought you were going to say Calamar. Okay. No. <laughs> Though I did have to send an additional message to perhaps leave him there. I thought the fastest way to get you out of town is to let you know your father was on the way. Yes, that, uh, that would have worked, yes. Good thinking. He does care about you, Talonor. You know that, right? He used the entirety of your family's fortune to find you, hiring mages from all across the world. 
I know, I think I just need a bit more time to think of some excuses. Yeah. He's in Relgoth. I see no reason for you to have to go there, and I will send word that he is not to come here. Perhaps after your test, you might go visit him, at least to let him know that you are alive. Perhaps I will, but... I get the feeling we we'll won't see. have the time. Well, pleasure meeting you, Svartal. And enjoy oh, that yeah. plant. Thank you. Thank you. And Talonor. When you're done with whatever business Palamon has you doing, you visit me every night, two hours. You understand? Oh, I'll be here. Good. They're going to make so many jokes about this. Well, Svartal's now witnessed what's actually going on, so maybe not. Well, off with you then. I have things to do and a curriculum to prepare. Oh, good. That's all. I think we should um, leave for now. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Yep. She'll give you a small nod and a smile and send you back out amongst the people of Kalamon. Anything else you would like to do before returning back to the castle, taking a rest, and uh, moving on with our next thing? What if he has bad test anxiety? <laughs> oh, I do. Super good. Oh, oh, oh I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would think that uh, Sparta would reveal some stuff on the way back. Okay. Uh, yeah, like as you guys are walking back through town, sure. Yeah, just on the way back as we're walking slowly, and I don't know, would uh would Talonor be kind of like almost absent thinking about stuff, probably? No, I don't know. I think he'd probably quite welcome the distraction by a conversation. Okay. Well, yeah, I just mean like he would he would break the the tension a little bit by. Hey, you know how um. You know how me and my sister we kind of fight a lot. Don't really seem to like each other. Mm -hmm. I never assumed you didn't like each other, to be honest. I mean, we like each other. But, like... I left my home. Kind of, you know, like this. You know, I, I, I didn't want to say anything in there, because as much as, you know, I'm kind of... I know I'm not very smart, but I know when to shut up. Uh, but I left, and uh, she's pretty mad about that, too. But, uh... I kind of know what you're going through. I don't know anything about no shooting moonlights and stuff. That's pretty cool. I wish I could do that. I don't really know about it either, to be honest, Svartal. I can just sort of do it. I think it's cool. But I, I, I want you to know... I think you're smart. I think you're emotionally intelligent, perhaps, instead of book smart. Ah, well, thanks. See, I don't know books. Books and me don't get along. But, you know, I learned a lot while I was gone. You know, I was in the forest. Uh, I learned about plants and, and animals and and all kinds of cool stuff that my sister doesn't even really know about that much. So her and I have some things to work out, but I do know what it's like to leave your home and mm. kind of have that be complicated. It may not be the same, but I just want to let you know that I understand. No, I, I appreciate it, Spartan. I think you clearly learned a lot of important things. I noticed how good you were with the animals at the festival, for instance. I'm somewhat envious. I've always enjoyed animals, but... Yes, I, it's, it's difficult. I left my home in not the best of terms. It was in the beginning of burning to the ground when I fled, so... Yes. Yeah, I mean... We find out, we found out that, uh... You know, our mother had died because she went on this crusade with, you know, the guy that... I remember you saying, yeah. Yeah, he had this shield, which I don't even know why I have it anymore. I should just throw it away. Uh, but I, yeah, I left, I left on that, which was not... We were not happy, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that... Actually, I know my sister's real mad at me for it, and uh, I'm still trying to work that out. Yes, it can take a long time to come to terms with these things. 
Bottle, if you don't mind me asking, it's... Sorry, I've never really met anybody like you. How old are you in Ravenna? It's hard to tell sometimes. Oh, we're, you know, we're like... Shit, how old are we? I was gonna say, I don't we're, even think I know this. <laughs> we're... We're young for half orcs, but I think we're, but I think I think we'd arc, we'd still um, be we'd still be check. young for elves too, so be very young to me I think. Yeah, because I think um, I think we're what in our fifties or something like that. I I forget what it was. I feel like we're older than that. Half orcs live short. Half orcs live yeah. Oh, short are they short? Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like sixty or seventy, I think. Oh, well, we're not quite middle aged. Oh, so, maybe? yeah, we're probably in our 20s then. I thought they lived longer for some reason. Well, I think because we were basing it off of goblins. Oh, um, maybe. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only reason why. We we would be. So, I would probably. I wouldn't relay a number because I don't know what that's going to be sure. like. Yeah. But we would be, you know, you would you would see us as essentially children's age, probably, in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very young, murderous yeah. folk. Well, but Svartal, have you ever have you met many elves like me before? I know that was quite a quite an unusual group. Um, no, but I've I've heard of you. I mm. I did have, I mean, I don't even I haven't told anybody this. There was a magical creature that I met while I was in the forest, and they talked about your your kind a lot. What kind of creature? Uh, she said she was a fae, I think. See, Talnor's eyes visibly go wide at this and is like, that's something that I haven't encountered. Quite lucky to counter a fae and survive from what I hear. They're immensely powerful. Oh yeah, I mean, we met and I th I had to hide, it was, it was difficult, but mm. she noticed me and like taught me how to hide better and stuff. Wow. I mean, they are the masters of the forest. They're revered in Sylvanesti. So, yeah, I don't know. I, there was a, there was a, a herding deer, and I was, you know, I was trying to help it, and then I heard some rustling, so I went and hid. But I, I, I don't know. I think she said something about it was a good thing I did. I think. <laughs> That's incredible, Spottle. You've had a, you've had a wondrous experience there. Clearly, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was well, a nice day is even rarer from what I hear, so congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's Sur nice. Surviving and remembering anything with your encounter is a blessing and a half. Uh, yeah. Cool. Head back to Castle Kalamon. Uh, is there anything that the rest of our party wanted to do or talk about in the meantime uh, before we call it a, a long rest? Uh, I, had, I had something, actually. Um, sure. When Talonor returns and we said hello and, and, and stuff. <laughs> sure. Um, I yeah. would ask... Talonor, at this point, I don't think it's a secret that you're a, a magic wielder. Um, I think we That's can all true. dispense with that. Um, I was actually wondering if, if I could borrow your arcane focus and I can improve it for you. Now... How do you mean by improve? Um, my arcane focus is actually the family signet ring I wear, so it's an object of some sentimental value. I'm not saying you can't, but perhaps more details first, maybe. Um, well, I guess in simple terms, it'll allow you to, to focus more uh, when casting a, a spell. Um, but just some form of engraving or enchantment. I, I don't even think I need to engrave it. Just You're not going to um, weld it onto a giant metal spider or anything like that, are you? No, unless okay. you'd like that, but... I... Is that an option? If that's an option, you're tempting me something uh, Maybe, maybe... maybe again, I think my father might be pissed enough at me as it is, so maybe I shouldn't graft our family signet onto a giant spider, but... Yes, I no, mean, please. Know, look at, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, ask for forgiveness, not permission, you know, like, at that point, so... Who doesn't that is want, excellent, who doesn't, excellent idea, yeah. Who doesn't want a, a moonlight tank cannon? <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh, You're man. all making very valid points. But, um, Hang on a minute. <laughs> Rizik, assuming that you don't alter its form, yes, I'm more than happy for you to to take a look at it. And I'll I'll slip the the signet ring off my finger and give it to him. Okay. Sure. Uh, so, Joel, I, I will spend an hour uh, using one of my infusions to make it an enhanced arcane focus. Um, so it's plus one to spell attack rolls, and you ignore half cover when making a spell attack. Yes. 
Hang you on. even polished it. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. It's so. <laughs> it's so nice. Is he gonna be even a, a even a better sniper? What the heck? Yeah. So, for everyone at home, uh, it's an equivalent to essentially a wand of the war mage. If you're ever looking for something to like, just add to your, um, your page here that that matches that. So Talonor, I'm basically just gonna add a wand of the war mage to your inventory okay. here, uh, and that is the equivalent for it. There you go. Well, it's funny you say about uh, sort of sniping, Svartal, actually, because um, I've sort of been recalling some some magics available to me that are actually going to benefit you and, and Ravenna and, and likely likely our dear friend Rainer as well, um, which you may you may quite enjoy. I think um, I could show you them now, actually, if you if you don't want to wait for battle. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, we've barely done well done a little bit today, but I'm not exactly exhausted. I'm sure I could rustle something up for you. Ravenna, are you, are you up for this? It's going to be a little bit odd the first time, but you might enjoy it. Uh, Ravenna has a seemingly, uh, like you can see the steam kind of coming off of it, but she has like a really warm rag over her head and it's damp and she's just <laughs> sitting there and she like peers up and she's like, a little bowl of soup. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like holding like a little like like a bowl, and she's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Well, first, actually, I don't. I mean, I could just try this. I, I, I'm gonna step over to Ravenna. Can I just cast lesser restoration on her? And see yeah, if she gets better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, wow, you have lesser restoration. That's awesome. Yeah, I do. Uh, I believe I believe that does like a disease, right? Uh, I actually a disease or one condition. Yeah, yeah disease or one condition afflicting it. Yeah. yeah, so you remove Ravenna's disease. <laughs> Sorry, I, I've actually been able to do that for quite a long time, and I don't know why I didn't think of doing that earlier. <laughs> um, it's sort of all the punching holes and stuff has really made me forget <gasps> that I'm. That's not actually really what I've ever studied. You just see, like, she's like, guy goes. Huh. And then she like looks down and then she gets up really slow like this and she just starts towering <laughs> and then she like looks at you and she goes I can breathe through my nose now. Yes. <laughs> yes, I sort of took care of that for you. Uh, Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. Anyway, <laughs> on to the fun one. Um, yes, Svartal and Ravenna, if you could sort of stand stand nearby each other, please. Uh, okay. <laughs> They're standing next to each other. <laughs> I'm going to, uh... I just kind of, like, sort of... sidestep. <laughs> and I go, I was just like, it's kind of helping your elbows in the way. Don't touch me. <sighs> okay, you sort of see a silvery tendril start to emanate from Talonor's hands, and I'm going to twin spell haste onto both of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She, like, at first she's kind of like, she sees the tendril, she's like... <laughs> and she's like about to go like grab like whatever weapon she's like wait uh huh and we get that moment where like time slows down for both Ravenna and Svartal because now your bodies are moving so quickly uh yeah your movement speed it's right when Reyna walks in back from her bath like towel over yeah. the shoulders like <laughs> What is going on you here? You just see Svartal and Ravenna essentially vibrating, standing yeah. still. So, it, it, in this moment, to make this cooler, I think uh, Svartal would look over and like nudge, nudge her, like, stop touching me, stop touching me. And I would assume, on from your guys' perspective, it looks really fast. <laughs> yeah, just a brr, brr, brr. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're moving in doubled. Your speed is doubled. Speed and, is uh, doubled. Extra Damn. AC and dexterity saving throws and extra actions each turn. You get so you extra guys are actions. Fast. So he keeps doing it, and I'm like, just, you just kind of just see like me like vibrating because I'm just like, like trying not to touch him. <laughs> and then finally does it again. And then I just go, and I like <laughs> shove him, and it's like super fast. And I do it so yes. catches him off guard. Please have a have a run around. Uh, in, enjoy. Yeah. You, I I want you to get used to this because I I may have to do it to you in in combat uh, all of a sudden. So I like uh, push him really hard so he <laughs> falls over. Yeah, you please. want to roll contesting uh, strength sure, check to yeah, see if he go, falls over? Go athletics check. And guess what? All you right, can do go. two of these around now. Uh, I'm going to so... turn to Razik and be like, I didn't really think they'd just okay. start fighting each other immediately. <laughs> 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 just, wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> you did it, right? All right. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Uh, 
Athletics. Just making my athletics, own kaiju battle. Save. Oh, athletics. Oh, oh, bad, athletics, bad, bad, bad. save. It's okay. It was the same number anyways. Oh! <laughs> you shove him and Swartle's like a rock. Just stands there. <laughs> no, 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 you just... You just... Oh! <laughs> Throw yourself into him again. No! And I just keep like... But I keep going like fast. Like back yeah, and forth. Yeah, absolutely. You're moving very, very quickly. Uh, it turns out, though, after about a minute, you're both completely exhausted. So much so that you have to remain still. You are essentially so like, stunned for a round. I, like, run over, uh, like, as, like, my final, like, what I go... Uh, uh, I just, like, <laughs> fall on him. Mm -hmm. The magic Ooh, is yes, that, gone. that does happen at the end. Sorry, I should have warned you about that. But, um, yes, so that's something that we can we can do, if, if that's all right. And, uh, well, Why that works for so... actually fighting people. Why are you so exhausted? Oh, that'll only last a few seconds. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, as well, the, the round passes, I'll... you feel better. <laughs> Just after oh. Talonor shown that, there, I guess there's something else I'd better share as well. Ooh, magic uh, Talon oh. share. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Uh, Joel, can I just ask how big the room is? Uh, <laughs> the room is <laughs> tiny. Fireball. 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 The time we had the witch doctor. <laughs> Give me uh, some of some special brew to test for our stamina, and it made me go extremely fast. Well, that's because I'm actually a witch doctor. Oh, it's that's about a 45 I'm not, I'm not feet a in diameter. Fireball in the middle. And what about height? It's a ball. <laughs> it's a former ballroom. Yeah, I know. So it's about I twenty it's feet tall. Don't you dare drop fireball in this room! I swear. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna cast fireball, but I will cast the enlarged portion of enlarge reduce yeah. on uh, on Sparrow. Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> reduce oh, Ravenna. Oh, oh, oh geez, Sparrow, okay. you become a size larger, and you quadruple in. Oh, sorry, your weight is multiplied by eight. You double in all dimensions. How's the floor looking? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a groaning sound. There's uh, some crumbling from the stone beneath. Wait, Rizzy, can you do that? And then can I do my thing? Well, that well that's what I was thinking. I mean, you can try <laughs> casting a lot of now. We've actually <laughs> built a kaiju. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you. Yes, you have. Uh, you could cast a oh my based God. on him, We've and you'd be a very big, spiddle. very just, fast guy. I'll just have to put all my arcane infusions on Sparrow as well, making like a suit, suit like power armor or something oh, with man. charge. Yeah, yeah just charge making Sparrow into so, a space marine. That, yeah. With, <laughs> so like with haste, Sparrow, you uh, basically you can go 120 feet and then hit someone. Uh, and still have your additional action And you afterwards. can hit them twice. Yeah, yeah you can hit them <laughs> twice. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, wait, doesn't large affect anything other than size? And uh, you get additional damage. Um, oh, and you, okay. you have, uh, advantage on all of your strength, uh, saves and athletics checks and stuff like that, which you get from rage regardless, but, uh, mm -hmm. it's also one of those things that, like, contested athletics rolls and things like that generally go in your favor due to this. Um. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so I might be able to just grapple with this, uh, with another dragon contraption? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> you may be able to actually lift one. Oh my god. Uh, so like the dragon machine. That's, that's a whole thing. Goal. Yeah. So that'll be fun. We are building uh, and Yeah, design. that lasts about a minute <laughs> as well before Svartal is reduced back to normal size. Uh, mine is a little less cool. And you'll see Raina <laughs> stick out her hand and this bright light will emanate. And then as it dissipates, you'll see these 10 little mushrooms are just <laughs> sitting in her hand. So apparently eating one of these will heal you a little bit. Not a lot, like not a lot at Ow. all. I ate one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you right now gonna quickly close her hand, but if you eat more than one, uh, advisory warning, you will start to hallucinate, like a haunted vision type of hallucinations. So I mostly like wanted to explain that. <laughs> I like swallow it as I she say that. I go. Like that and I go. It's okay. I don't want to eat more than one. Not that good. <laughs> Not that good. Okay. 
Good work on the taste. I mean, I, I thought that was impressive. Yeah, I sort of good. made them fast. Razik made them big. You sort of solved world hunger, which is, you know. <laughs> uh, kind of. When I was younger, I just, I really had a fascination with mushrooms. And one morning I actually had mushrooms sprouting off of me. And I thought it was a condition, but realized that it actually was magic. And they would heal That's you. so reassuring, Raina, because you've seemed very sort of well put together, but that's incredibly weird. Yeah, that I had sort of a really puts me at ease childhood. a little bit. Yes. Uh, I, no, have good. A, I have a couple stories. I was pretty unhinged, but anyways. Yes. Excellent. No, I'm glad. Fantastic. <laughs> pretty unhinged. Yes. Well, it's been a good magical talent show. I, yeah. Next time I'll show you all Moon Horse, which is another thing that I can do. What? But... Moon <laughs> what? Horse. What? What? You can't just what leave us there. What is Moon Horse? We'll, sh we'll see Moon Horse another time. Oh moon my horse is god! Nay, sir, nay. <laughs> we see it now. Why do I not have a token for Moon Horse yet? What is happening? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where the spell came from. I just have, <laughs> no, it's from my Lunar Sorcery, but I don't know if it's new or not. I think it might be. And but, Lunar Sorcery um, is new, so yes. Yeah, but I think this, well, so, but it gives you some spells that pre-exist, like uh, Alter Self and stuff. But, okay. Yeah, I have that's Phantom new. Steed, where I can summon I think, like I a Moonlight that's... Horse kind yeah. of thing. Damn, but, okay. Yeah, I just, ha I, I literally have like summon Mount from an MMO. Great. Mm, right, everybody, cool. <laughs> after all this little show and tell and stuff, and they're all like, yeah, that's cool, cool. We're running, we'll go. Looter hands. I just punch stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not sick anymore, so, hey. That is true. Yeah. Hmm. Uh -huh. But we need, look, we need people like, good at punching things. Yeah, well, the plant's hey, excellent. Well. Plant. <laughs> we did get the plant, <laughs> yes, that was, that was good. Yes. Svartle and I cunningly Which? solved a problem to get the plant. It was very good. Big. Where did I, you get I nod at brother. I nod at my brother in, like, approval, like, all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll add a, you know what? We'll add a, a plant to our, our table. <laughs> now there's a plant. I hope we don't forget to water it. It's it's. Oh all right. my god! We'll figure it out. As the magical talent show comes to a bit of an end, and uh, you all make for a long rest. There is a long day tomorrow. We'll take a quick break. The Dragon Queen has gone to war. The conquest of Ancelon has begun. Eastern portions of the continent have fallen. Kenderbor and Sylvanesti fight for their lives. Where are the heroes in our time of need? Who will stand and join the ranks of the Shard? Join the premier mercenary group known as the Shard of Discord. Build your character, select your class, and roll dice in a game designed by me, Runaway Robot. Scout, build, craft, and fight your way to victory during live stream game crises that directly affect the Diefall show Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Join now at patreon.com slash Diefall. Shard of Discord Season 2 begins. Welcome back. The Diefall presents Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. It's the next morning. Yes, we are all level 5. That was the little magical showcase of people and their new abilities, powers, and things. But we find ourselves still up in the uh, appropriated rooms for our heroes uh, with one Derrett Highwater making an entrance here with a long kind of like cylindrical case underneath one arm. He is wearing his Salomnic armor and he will make his way to the head of the table here. Um, and he seems a bit, I don't want to say grim, but concerned. Ah, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, if you don't mind gathering around here real quick, I've... Uh, well, uh, we've got, I've got my first mission uh, with the command. Also, uh, Cudgel's in, um, got to see her last night. That was cool. Uh, she said that you all brought her uh, into Kalamon and, and it looks like I, well, it looks like Cudgel reports to me now, which is again, very weird. So any assistance you all have for this, <laughs> Next little endeavor will be greatly appreciated. Uh, again, if you don't mind taking a moment here to listen to what we've got to do. You know what? I, I need to be more assertive. We have a mission. Um, I am your commanding officer, and here's the plan. We'll watch outpost stands near the border uh, with the land of, of Eastwild. Uh, it supplies Kalamon's forces at the patrol border there but it's been taken by the Red Dragon Army forces rather recently. So, our job is going to be retake 
the fort. He'll undo the cylinder here and rolls out uh, a map that shows Wheel Watch Outpost and some of the surrounding area there. Uh, and for you guys, uh, you would actually have a, a nice little map of Wheel Watch Outpost. Uh, just kind of there so you can see what it looks like. The fort is about 24 miles southeast of the city. It's been taken by the dragon army. And, well, my command and the Vogler forces and those that are capable from cudgels are... Well, we're, we're heading to go retake it. Um, it's honestly a rather small force. Obviously inexperienced. So I would like to ask for your assistance in this. Um, I've already been given leave by the... Uh, by the commander to, to ask you if you're willing to take the job. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I'm, I'm sure we're willing. Uh, thank you, Razik. Uh, um. Well, Razik just spoke for me, so... <laughs> I suppose I'm willing. Uh, all right, then. Uh, good. You see, he, like, relaxes a little bit. His customary smile retakes his face here. Good. All right. Um... So, if you take a look at the map here, uh, the fort's northwest tower, it's a, it's a watchtower, has a rather commanding view of the surrounding area. All four of the corner fortifications are equipped that have uh, these horns that sentries will use to raise an alarm. Um, we don't know how many Dragon Army soldiers occupy the fort, or if they have any of their Draconic soldiers either, so we'll have to um, perhaps observe the fort at a distance and see if we can't make anything out, or maybe do some stealthy saluting. Something like that. Uh, also, it'll take uh, about eight hours to uh, for us to get there and uh, set up camp just outside the fort area. Uh, my idea is, now that you've agreed, <laughs> is hopefully sending a, um, a crack team to infiltrate, slip into the fort, and open a gate without raising the alarm. However, I'm rather amenable to any plans you might think would serve better at time. Um, and maybe we learn something uh, after we arrive and do a little reconnaissance. Does that all sound good? Yes, sir. So, yeah, hi. Sparta would give a, uh, a, a nice pat on the shoulder, a, a, a hefty one, to, uh, to yeah. like, yeah, right. good job. Sir, that's something new. Right, I, yes, I guess I am Captain Derrett Highwater now, which is... Whew, this is going to take a whole lot of getting used to. Anyways, uh, well, gather your things. He'll start rolling up the, uh, the map here. And, uh, you'll meet with me and the company, uh, outside the... Whew, the Warrior's Gate. Right. <laughs> and he'll give, uh, a Kalaman salute, which I don't know what it is. It's probably just a rather traditional salute, and turn for the door. Understood. And, like, are there other people with us? Like, oh, it's just us? you guys oh, here in the okay. room. He came to meet you Got and it. ask you personally. Okay. Yeah, and he will exit the, the room and go to wait uh, out out of outside the gate for you guys to get there. So is there anything that you need to do or want to do inside Kalamon here before meeting up with the Force and heading to retake Wheel well, Watch Outpost? Before we leave, I will say to the others, I'll be like, um... I need to get changed, so you wouldn't mind waiting outside. Very communal room in here. <laughs> I'll, I'll look him up and down. You're wearing clothes right now. Yes, I'm going to be wearing uh, different Ravenna, clothes. Ravenna, let's go. We gotta go. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Huh? It goes away. <laughs> just yeah, just like you guys just, just grab your stuff okay, and go. Like yeah, because well, yeah, Sparta would kind of know what's going on, so he's just like, oh, we, we, we gotta go. We gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> I'll get, my, uh, I'll get the, the red robe out the bottom of my pack and notice it's just dusty and crumpled. Goodness sake, this is awful. I, I'll I'll spend longer than I need to press digitating it to clean it up as well. Yeah, what does it uh, smell like? Ooh. <laughs> it's like sweaty backpack. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing. Just damp uh, leather. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fully press the digitate it and yeah. even, you know, add on a couple of little my embroideries from my tunic and Sure. Yeah, well, I suppose it's better than nothing. And I I'll make sure I I notice it's like a very garish red, like a, mm. a newbie robe. Yes. I'm just gonna like alter it slightly to be like a deeper crimson. I'm like, that's so much nicer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it doesn't go. hurt your eyes as much. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I will I will don my my crimson robe. 
Damn. Head out. Okay. Um, yeah. Reyna, Razik, is there anything that you want to do before leaving Kalamon? Another, another for me. Okay. Reyna? To Talonor. Wait, do you have the ability to magically change clothing to look like something different? Or did you change change? Well, it's a... I, I changed into this, but sort of yes to both your uh, questions. I was... I don't know if I even answered this. I was actually a, a tailor before I came to Bogler, so um, oh, magic really? and tailor and already had a robe means uh, yes, I can do quite a few things. Good to know. Why, what Good do you want know. doing? Well, People normally just, ask that before really they awkward. ask for something to be done. <laughs> it's really awkward to walk around in that suit of armor, but what's even more in min the aforementioned, aforewarned suit of armor, <laughs> but yeah. what's even more awkward is to walk around it given it's symbolism uh oh. in in this town so if you could just magically alter it then i would never have to change and then I mean, something something that minor your... on armor i can probably get rid of with minor magic i can't alter the armor i'm not an armor smith but i could probably like the color imagine of it? remove like an engraving or change the tint or something yes oh okay okay why what what do you need doing I... you want the dragon symbols off of it that would probably need an armor smith they're quite emblazoned on there Maybe, maybe Razik could... Okay, uh, I'm probably... Maybe Razik is a better... Raz yeah, Razik works with metal a, a lot. He'd probably be a smarter person to ask. We'll come back to this. We're going to put a pin yes. in this. We're going to come back to you this. You want your shirt to be a different color, though? Hey, <laughs> There you go. I right, can do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we head out to uh, Kalamon proper and meet up with the group outside. Uh, you would find that it is... Quite a few of the people from Vogler that you've seen previously outside the Warrior's Gate, and including one cudgel Iron Smile as well. Seems that she is well enough to take this bit of a job here and, and head out. You're greeted warmly by those from Vogler. Um, rather hearty cheers for those that saved them. Um, and Derrett on his horse. Full Salomnic armor at the front of the line. All right, so we're off to retake Wheel Watch Outpost. Everybody mount up. About an eight hour trek. And then uh, we'll see what we can do. Come on then. And he will begin a bit of a trot out away from Kalama. You, of course, would be provided with horses if possible. Some of you are rather large. Uh, and would maybe need to keep up alongside, but that's okay. It does. Strato wouldn't ride a horse anyway. Yeah, it does take uh, about eight hours. About a moon horse. Um, ooh. Do you want to <laughs> summon your moon horse? No. <laughs> right now. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I'm gonna just kind of take us out onto uh, the map here. It's not overly far away. It's not even a large enough outpost to be marked on the map at all, um, but it is, you know, an eight-hour trek towards Istwild, away from Kalamon in the south and easterly way and location, and it does take a bit of time to get there. As when you were heading south previously, again, somewhat dour weather takes a turn once again. The rain begins to fall, and does for the next four hours during your travel proper. It's a bit annoying, it slows your travel, but everyone seems to be in good enough spirits here until we get closer. Derrett makes the call that we're about 20 minutes away from the location and people begin to get more serious. There's some settling in saddles, adjusting of armor and weapons. So far, we haven't seen any sign of people, other soldiers, draconic mercenaries or otherwise. But in the approach here, the Wheel Watch Outpost, it's tense. Wheel Watch Outpost lies south of where the streams known as Gravel Run and Raiding Rill meet. And in the distance, a squat stone fortress rises from one of the last patches of green before the rocky scrubland of Estwild. Its tall wooden gates are flanked 
by crenellated battlements and solid watchtowers. Torchlight shines through the fort's windows, and every so often, armored figures make their way along the walls. Darrett will call for a halt here from up on this covered hill. Fortunately, some of the uh, copses of trees here providing a bit of a breakup between being spotted on the walls there. Dismounting the horses and pulling them off deeper into the forest there, some of the you know, former Iron Smile mercenaries help out. Darrett will move to you all first. Right. Oh, so that's Wheel Watch. And, um, well, I think we uh, maybe take some time here. Watch it for a time. And I was thinking, perhaps, this is more of a nighttime mission. You know, sneaking over the walls and such. What are your thoughts? Certainly nighttime. Certainly nighttime. Yes, I mean... Right. Nighttime's no obstacle to us. I... I think striking under the cover of darkness would be beneficial. All right. Well, good. I'm glad I have some agreement then. Um, well, let's post up here then and, um, well, and he'll like crawl through the damp grass out towards the edge of this hill, right? It has a bit of a drop off the side. Let's see what we can see. And what I would love from you all here is uh, perception or investigation checks. 16, 14, 10, 17, and 10. Fortunately, with a couple of these above 15. As you wait and observe, time continues to drag on. It gets damp and a little cramped, and we begin to, like, take turns at who's watching what and doing what. Over the next eight-ish hours, you kind of figure out the following as darkness begins to fall over the outpost. The corner towers switch watch duty about on every four hours. Pretty good timeliness on that. Additionally, you're able to estimate that there seems to be maybe 20 total Dragon Army soldiers in the fort. So far, you don't see any Draconic soldiers. Just the human ones. Derrett, you know, kind of pushing backwards from the edge here after one of his turns watching. Well, all right. I, I don't think we're going to get much more uh, information like this, huh? Uh, perhaps the rain will help keep us cover as well. I'm going to prepare the men up here. And we'll be waiting for that door, that gate to open. And when it does, we're going to come running down the hill, spill into it, and clear the rest of the damn place out. But I need you all to get that gate open. Hopefully, without raising the alarm. We should have a signal in case something goes wrong and you well, shouldn't I, storm the gates. I was just going to add, anyway, who's got the sending stones? I mean, I can't... Darrett and Rena. Yeah, Darrett has oh, one. Well, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I guess just use yeah, them, he'll, right? he'll pull it out. And he's, right, and I have not, not right used now. it. I have not used it today. <laughs> Don't worry. No, I, I think... I think this is good. Yes. Use the sending stone if it gets bad. And we'll try to lay some assault on the walls. The issue is going to be we won't likely be able to break in. We've got some 30-odd soldiers here, which is more than enough to take this place, I think. Especially watching how many we've got on the walls, but it won't be easy to take the walls without that gate open. We didn't bring ladders or siege equipment. I've got a couple of grappling hooks, but we'll be taking fire the entire time. you can sneak it in, open that gate, then we are good as gold. Consider it done. Good. But, if you do not see the gate open, do not proceed with your plan. Only if I get the call. So it's up to you, Reyna. Should that happen? It'll be your judgment. 
Right. Was it kind of like a necklace type deal? No, it's just a stone you like keep in oh, a just, pocket. Just a stone. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. All right. Darkness has fallen. It'll be a little hard to see. The rain may help you with cover. Good luck to you all. And Godspeed. And he'll move off to <clears throat> go prepare the other soldiers. I wanted to quote SpongeBob. <laughs> just, I wanted to quote just a stone. It's a, it's a rock. rock. Uh, ah. So, you have the map of the Wheel Watch outpost here. My question to you all is: is how are we making the approach? Currently, you're off on like the northwesterly side, a good bit of a ways away, right? So you're not being actively observed. So it's going to be like a quarter mile walk through what seems to be some scrubland uh, and kind of little cover to make it to the walls of the outpost itself. It's rather clear that like, yes, this is an outpost. They're trying to keep watch. They tend to keep things clear around the area. So how do you think it's best to do this? Uh, Razik will speak up and, and say, well, I've got two ideas so far, um, if, if no one else does. Um, I've got one. <laughs> does like it involve the, the... Well, my first idea is I know um, Talonor can make someone invisible. I, I have the same ability, so maybe two people can sneak in that way and open the gates. As simple as that. Um, um. My other idea um, is for... Um, Reyna, you have that armor, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> Talonor, I assume you, based on what you said earlier today, you have the ability to alter your appearance. Um, I do? Oh. I, I, oh. I can, I could also <laughs> do that. <laughs> um, oh. So perhaps we could masquerade as a, as a patrol, ask them to open the gates, stand there talking to them, and in that time, Darrett brings up the the, the squadron with him. Why not both? Uh, well, I don't. Want, we I won't be able to. have a couple people invisible that come in with us. Yes, that's that's that what I was going to In case they need to break away. The only issue is that I can't do both things at once. I don't think. Well, well here's the thing, though. We may they don't know our faces. We maybe don't need to alter our appearances. We have the armor. Reyna wears the armor. She's you know coming back in, acting all hoity toity or whatnot, and. We all sort of trudge in invisible behind her. Then something happens and we win. Am I gonna have to Chewbacca? <laughs> yes! Am I, am I gonna have to Chewbacca and become the prisoner? <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> I think between Razik and I, we can turn all of us invisible. I can, if we're not doing mm. Reyna, I can turn all of us invisible on my own, but. That armor does come in handy. <laughs> The you're, off you're gonna have to maybe be a little charismatic, so be prepared. Uh, Raina's got this. Uh, <laughs> Raina's yeah, got this. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. I believe. A paladin this. knows what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I did lead that double life before being a paladin, so. It's true. It's true. Okay. Um, that is an idea. Raina, do you get changed? Yeah. Time to get okay. changed again. Raina's wearing the dragon Spins army. Around. Yeah. Pal <laughs> <does> the paladin. <laughs> It does the paladin power of change. Dun, 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 dun. It was like our magical some girl change. Stuff? Yeah, exactly. I'm just imagining up in the hills, like at night, there's just like a wee, wee, beacon wee, of wee, light. Wee, <laughs> okay. Uh, and Talon, you said you could turn how many people invisible? Uh, four. I can twin cast increased level invisibility and turn four people invisible. God damn. That's yeah. a lot of invisible people. I'm a sneaky boy. That's yeah, indeed. I'm a Getting out of situations, boy. that's my specialty. <laughs> Wait, hold on for one second. Okay, hear me out. One soldier comes running over the hill, just running towards the encampment while you guys are behind me all invisible. They're coming, they're coming! Or no, not even, just saying that I barely escaped. Don't want to warn them while you sneak in but wait, and do whatever you have to do. That's a good idea for, we might cause a bit of a panic. Do we not want to approach it in a sense that we could maybe, you know, get to the head of the snake? If... Or just throw me on a horse and I'll pretend like I'm like half <laughs> dead and you just like slap the horse's butt. My only problem would be, <laughs> my only problem would be is that we, we would, would be leading them out. We would be leading Two them seconds. out 
and mm. they would possibly be like okay like let's look around and then they would go turn around because they're by themselves and they'd be like we need to get more people to come out to go look around that would be like my that would be like my counter thought to that but if we approach them if reyna's in armor let's say and she has one of us as a prisoner if we state that that prisoner is of high importance she'll probably get taken to whoever's in charge we all follow behind you know deal with that person, however that may occur. And then we should have the run of the place, really. If we cut the head off, they'll all be disorganized. We can go and open the gates, and they're going to have no leadership in any sort of fight that ensues. And, you know... I, may... I think the important thing is, is once they open the gate, to make sure it stays open. Because obviously, you know, we, we get them to open the gate, and we stand in, I guess, the doorway, so they don't close it, and then call... Um, Darrett, and hopefully by the time they if they see him, they might call an alarm. But then we just have to fight and hold there, right? Does that make sense? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, we could. Uh, that's if there's a lot of them, that might be incredibly dangerous. But we could do that, you know. I'm not exactly sure how many of them we can take. Really, probably a good amount, at least enough until they arrive. Yeah, I'm good with taking, like, a prisoner and then, uh, like, having the rest sneak in invisible. And then, like, party off and then, like, open the gate. If we want to do that. Cut off the head of the snake. Party and you're off, saying, sorry. Talonor, if you're okay, if we caption to the leader, you're you're okay with that? If we hold him hostage, that's fine? Sure. Just I, I'm clear. just trying to think of the best way to get inside. I... We need a prisoner volunteer. Obviously, Reyna, you fit the armor, so no way I'm wearing that stuff. There is a second suit, if you want. I'm not wearing that. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> no chance. He just okay, cleaned his feet. robes. Exactly. Touche. <laughs> Which are now already dirty and muddy from doing the thing. And press watching. the station, no, not. <laughs> press the station, press the station, press the station. Constantly, Constantly doing it. Okay. Okay, so who wants to be the prisoner? I would suggest either me or Talon, or probably, right? We'd... I vote Razik. <laughs> For a prisoner? <laughs> yes. Razik, you've been okay, volunteered? You. Well, I think is that we want to portray them as being a valuable prisoner, yes. right? Like some sort of local Why are you officer. Saying that we don't look valuable. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I disguise I myself. I just. <laughs> I, I think I may be somewhat of a strange prisoner to behold, given my new attire. I think Razik is. Far more easier to we sell as anything we want. We could claim you're the tiefling, Razik. Maybe they know about the tiefling. We could say that we caught him. That would be some spicy stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah, we could say that, yeah. That also okay. might get you in trouble work. or might get you dead. Never mind. No, I'm not trying to kill you. Let's just, but yeah, they we'll might just immediately simple. kill me. We'll keep it simple. We'll take Razik as a prisoner. All right. And then the rest of us will sneak in, open the gate. And then bada bing bada boom. <laughs> bada yes, bing bada boom. Set something on fire, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Open the gate, set something on fire. We've got like a, you know, prisoner escort. You know, there's like so much stuff going on, so they have to like split their attention, you know? Typical mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so who's Rizika's prisoner? Rizika's okay. prisoner. Rizika's prisoner. Who's invisible? <laughs> he says reluctantly. Uh,. <laughs> Spottle, Ravenna, and I? I, th I think yeah. I have to be invisible, yeah. Yeah. The siblings. Siblings are invisible? And, uh, yeah, and magic hands. Just imagine, like, a huge individual <laughs> bonking you on the back of the head, but they're invisible, so you don't know what the fuck happened. You're just like, ah! Yeah. But then they become visible afterwards, so keep that, so that in mind. That might be worse. Should yeah, because there, oh, yeah. be, there has to be concentration, so, like... Well, yes. yeah, uh, it's also one of those... You can hit. Right. Talonor holds the concentration for all of you. Yes. Oh. Uh, and in addition, should you make any additional spell casts or attack actions, you become visible again. Yeah. So like we can't really have uh our this, prisoner. Yeah. Uh. Or we can't really have like Talonor get hit. Or and technically we need our our prisoner to be able to cast spells too. Uh, additionally, for this like uh, this invisibility does last an hour. So it is quite potent. 
uh, but it does have those limitations on actions and spell casting. Yeah, it does. It does break. Okay. Okay. Uh, are we just going to go through the try the north gate, walk on down to it, and see what happens? Yeah. Hell yeah! I love it. This but is keep great. up like a struggle. Like Reno will be like. Okay, so well, do we have some? We sure. could have some like rope and just not tie it, obviously, but just token wrap it around my wrists, so it looks like you're pulling me along, and I'm bound. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'll pretend to like tug it, but I'll try not to tug it too hard. You know, like, come on, dude. <laughs> so it like falls off. <laughs> yeah, come on, you. And then the rope falls off from his wrist. Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> All I've got are these fuzzy handcuffs. Dots. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Okay, right, sounds so like a plan. I assume I'll, uh, I'll, I'll twin cast level three invisibility. Okay, so big spend. Three of us. So spicy. That's a big spend. Uh, <laughs> I got, I'm a meta magic adept. I got a lot of points. It's fine. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we'll do that. Okay. So, all right. So we head towards the the north gate here. Again, it is about a quarter mile walk away, so it does take a bit of time to get there. As you approach the gate, uh. Reyna and Razik, I want you to roll me some kind of like performance or deception check as we approach uh, for this captured guy. And then, for those of you that are invisible, oh, I want stealth oh, I checks. I hate being captured. Stealth <laughs> checks with advantage due to invisibility as you okay. make your approach. Okay. Uh, Razik had a four on the performance. Uh, we had a, a reign of 14 deception. Oh, I don't know why I rolled twice. 16 still. My bad. 14. 13 and 13. Yeah, 14. 13, 16, and 14. Yep, 14, 16, and 13 for the stealth checks there as you make the approach. So, uh, Reyna and Razik, as you're attempting to do this, what are you What are you doing? Like, what's what's the thing happening as you, like, approach the, the gates here? Reyna, are you saying something? I feel like it would be actually kind of weird to be screaming out like prisoner prisoner for the dragon army so yeah no like i'm not really saying uh much i will just get kind of like close enough mm -hmm. and just like stop to make myself known sure you stop uh and yeah there's like a call out from up in this tower over here oh who goes there can't really get a good look at you in the dark here uh, my name is Mare. I am a part of the Dragon Army, and I, I have brought a prisoner. What's your rank? Entry level. En oh, God. <laughs> Ent well, I, what you got there? The, the horns. Uh, tiefling? Tiefling. This is a tiefling. Tiefling. Uh, and you're bringing it here. Who's your commanding officer? Dead. So it doesn't really matter. Oh, those bastards. <laughs> Another one down. It's fine. We'll take Kalaman soon enough, I think. Yeah, and I, I think you could use uh, this one. Very intelligent. Can make things. Oh, we got to make him talk. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> like a, a brief pause, the sound of like a door opening and closing, and then some shouting from inside the courtyard of, Go get the key to open the gate. We've got one of our own outside. And there would be a little bit of time that passes uh, before you are, you know, kind of greeted at the gate by a couple of dragon army soldiers as the gate is, you know, opened here. The gate is opened up. There's a click and a winching sound, kind of a crank off to the, the like, south and eastern side here. Uh, and they'll move forward. All right, all right, we'll bring him in. Come on now. Shuffle, 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 yeah, shuffle. Yeah, just kind of just bring him forward here. Uh, Razik is immediately grasped by the dragon army soldier here and, you know, dragged inside. Uh, hey, guys that are out on the other side, as this dragon army soldier is like, oh, come on in, come on in. I'm assuming, Reyna, you're following. Yes. Uh, hey, invisible oh, yes. folk. Yes. What are we doing? Right. Oh, we'll them with a katana. 
Uh, Teleports uh, behind guard. Nothing oh personnel, God. kid. Pocket sand. Pocket sand. Uh, yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be following at a safe distance, but if I saw any yeah. end of the gate begin to close, I would haul ass. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. they'd be going in, Same. and as soon as that happens, this guy will turn and goes, All right, all right, close it up quick. And there'd be a... Yeah, uh, roll me stealth checks, especially if you're getting that close. Okay. The I'll approach that, okay. went okay. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, you, they'd be moving you inside the building here. Um, again, this is with advantage, so please do remember to hey. toggle oh, your advantages yeah. on. It makes it oh a lot God. easier. I don't know why I toggled it off. Yeah, mine's yeah, yeah, yeah. So 13, uh, 8, and 19, Ravenna, is that right? Yeah. All right, so pretty good. And I think what happens here is like... So pretty good. Yeah, well, it's a group <laughs> check. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, all, a, it's all a group check. Uh, the, the sound of the gate closing, along with the, like, pitter-patter of the rain, is enough here that their your perception check is just not high enough. But the gate does close behind. And immediately in this, uh, this gate guard here will go scampering off, uh, down and then up some stairs off to the side. And you can see, like, dangling from his hand a set of keys as he runs away and up into a room. They will, like, continue to pull you into here. He's like, all right, all right, yeah. How about you take the damn tiefling into the, uh, you know, the jail over there? We can deal with him later. And you, I mean, we can get you a hot meal and a bed. You know, we gotta, you know, get you cleaned up, too. And the armor looks dinged up all to hell. Um, what'd you say your name was again? M my name is Mayor, but... Mayor. I, I, I can't leave him unattended. I appreciate your hospitality and all that, but... Oh, I'll no, go we've, we've I'll, got, I'll, a, we've I'll got a little prison. I mean, we're just gonna go lock him up there. Ardalic Vance is inside, our, our commanding officer. You know, he'll, he'll take good care of it. It's not that I don't trust you all, but I don't think what you understand is he's a very dangerous individual. I've been tasked with watching him personally. Dangerous in the sense that he can create machination, so if you just take your eyes off him for a brief moment, he could escape. And... Oh. You wouldn't want that. Right. Okay, um... Roll me a deception check. Uh, I mean... Okay, but my thing is, like, does she get advantage because technically some of it's true? <laughs> so, does she I mean, actually she does make deceive? machinations, you know? So. Uh, the best lies are rooted in truth. I was gonna uh, say, does the armor also, like, <laughs> give it advantage? Yeah, and he goes, oh, uh, all right, all right, uh, and then you take him into the prison there. If you want to keep guard all night, I'll, I'll bring you some food or something, right? Oh. Look, if he gets free, it'd be my head and, you know... I don't want to keep that on your shoulders. Am I right? And I kind of just like pat him <laughs> on the shoulder. No, no, that's all right. It's all right. I mean, we're just sitting out here in the damned rain anyways, keeping watch. Now, those Calamon bastards are probably going to send someone sometime to try and take this place back. But hey, don't even worry about it. We've got ourselves a dragon L here. They ain't standing a chance. Oh, I doubt it. Not after what we did to them in Vogler. Uh. Barely made it out of there with my, well, head on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, we'll take him in, and he'll point up to, like, this room over here. In the, uh, north, like, western corner. And they'll, they'll just watch you. You, you have to, you have him, and you gotta just go up to it and go inside. All right, get on in there. Yeah, Sorry. Ah, go, go, guy, go. <laughs> Absolutely. I just imagined her apologizing, like, move it, like, shut up. Sorry, sorry. Die. Sorry, I rolled so really sorry. low in that I, like, passed, but I felt like I just, like, I was like, 14? Uh... Entering okay. uh, this room here, there is a man seated at the table writing what looks to be a report. Um, he is clean-shaven, has a, a bit of a pencil-thin mustache, is wearing the reds and blacks of the army here, and as you enter, he goes, hold, 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 I thought I heard something outside, gate opened up and all that. Um, what is, what is this? What is all this? Who are you? You're not in my, uh, company? No, my company's dead. Uh, this is a prisoner. My name's Mayor. Sorry, I didn't answer those in the order that you asked them. All right, that's <laughs> fine. Cool. He, like, gets up and he shuts the door behind you. He's like, damn. Peace. <laughs> damned rain. You should have sent Spottle, damn it. All right, that's, <laughs> that's fine then. 
Um, well, he'll pull out some some keys here, and he'll make to open the northern one. He's like, "All right, get his ass in there, then." Uh, kick. <laughs> Rizik, are you I, just going with? I, 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 yeah, I will. I will make a suitable attempt to look like I stumble in and then oh, fire a skull hard. back. You just kind of have like a muddy boot print on your butt now. <laughs> You're stumbling in and the gate is closed behind you. You are locked inside. Alright. Alright, job well done, everyone. Set up. Um... <laughs> <laughs> bow, bow. Seems well and good. Uh, what company are you from, then, the mayor? Oh, my company's dead, as I said. Does it that still matter if everybody's... Well, if I'm, he, he points out, his, I'm actually currently making a report to console the Fire Eyes themselves, and, and it would be good to know which company has been destroyed. As far as I know, there's only one north of here, and they should be harrying Kalaman's gates in the next few days. Uh, you're saying they're already dead? Well, most of them. I barely made it out with my life. I, so, I'm going to be really honest with you, and please, please don't tell this to anybody else. I was kind of just thrust into this. I was handed a suit of armor and told to stand in line, and then all of a sudden, I knew oh. bombs were dropping from the air, are, are and you the city was one on of fire. Those new and... mercenaries. I mean, I was before I became a part of the Dragon Army. Yes, oh, right. Uh, we're hiring everyone these days. Honestly, that's that makes sense. Look, I don't even really know the name of the person that was leading our battalion, but I just know he's dead. Huh. That's all right. I can always use another soldier that takes orders well. Well, I'm Captain Ardrelic Vance. Welcome to my small company here. We currently hold this outpost. I'm kind of waiting on the uh, old Kalaman bastards to attempt to take it back. So, in that regard, go get yourselves warmed up. We'll get you a bed in the barracks there, and, uh, well, good work on at least a capture. We'll set about to, um, Torture and interrogation tomorrow morning, I think. That sounds about right. In fact, you know what? I think that you are more deserving of that meal, of that hot meal and that rest, good sir. It seems like you've been sitting here for quite a long time. In fact, this particular individual, I've been tasked with watching them every single second of every single minute of every single day, because <laughs> if you take your eyes off them for but a brief moment, they will break out of that cage. You don't want that. Well, that's all right. Um, I think perhaps we should probably strip him of his belongings then. How about you no, go do that? No, don't strip the man. I already done that. He oh. has only but his clothes on him. Don't leave him indecent. <laughs> right, right. Calm down. Here's your new orders. Because you said your company is all gone, I am now your new commanding officer. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Right. So continue to follow orders, just as you've done, and just believe me. He's locked in there, aren't you, horny guy? And you can go get a meal. <laughs> and then, you can come back and take up the post all night if you'd like to. Greg is actually in horny jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. What have you done? Right? <sighs> So who, briefly, but who Rizik is your captain knows. now? Rizik can t tell the tension. Like, I just briefly look at Rizik and then back to the captain. Yes, sir. Back to Rizik, <laughs> and then I'll leave. And you leave. Okay. Door Fuck. opens. <sighs> Buddy. Closes behind you. And you are now yeah. out in the courtyard. Boy, oh, uh, we'll get you coming and uh, settled up. In the, uh, the barracks there. I'll get you a nice little meal. The man that had gone up the stairs is now back in the courtyard as well. Come on, then. Those of you that have been waiting outside here the whole time, what have you been doing? Uh, I would be, like, perusing around trying to find, like, their armory. Like, okay. Where they've yeah, been, like... I would be having a look around, just seeing what's on the ground. Is there also ways up to the walls, easily? Right, uh, so we can kind of do, I mean, we'll just do like a small look around. Uh, I assume we just stick to the walls and out of the way as much as possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, uh, So, gate controls kind of up on this side. You note that they yeah. do seem to take a key of some kind before they can be cranked open. Well, Joel, I had a question about that, because I, I want to look at the gate controls specifically. Yeah. 
can I discern whether the lever, whatever it is, does it keep the gates open or does it keep the gates closed? Uh, yes. So is it, well, is it a winch that, like, locks them in place, or is it a winch that you then winch it and it locks it opens them? in place. So it, it is, when you winch so it, it's not like... they'd open. No, no, it's not, it's not, like, spring-loaded. It is okay. just, like, like, like winch one it's way... Like, to, that's where it's gonna be. Correct. Right, I see, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They're, they're, yeah, so it's just winch to open and winch to close. Oh, okay. So yeah, they're breaking not it wouldn't spring, spring the doors. Correct. If okay. you broke it, they would just be locked in whatever position they're currently in. So we can open it and then break it. Yeah, exactly. you can do that. Uh, yeah, so there's a mechanism here. Uh, it looks like it requires a key of some kind, or perhaps you could, you know, maybe thieves tool it or something like that. Uh, you did observe that while it was happening, it does take what seems to be about a minute to fully open and close. Uh, as you move about again, continuing our, our, our little tour here, you do note uh, up on the second floor, there is some more of these arrow slits. The arrow slits themselves are about six inches wide, uh, and you can see some beds and things up in that area. Uh, there is access to the walls up some of these stairs here. The walls themselves are about 20 feet tall. Pretty tall. Um, there seems to be some kind of uh, fire or a chimney here, a little wooden outbuilding. Um, another set of gate controls on the south side as well and what seems to be a, a double door to a stable of some kind and you can hear inside um some kind of creature maybe banging around a little bit and the sound of a, of a man like speaking softly to whatever it is uh, again you know, kind of around you would note that there is some stairs at the far end of this that go down to the wall and then again some double doors to what seems to be a storage comp like location there uh, and then, of course, you were next to the prison at one point. So as, like, they were doing that discussion in the prison, you make it quickly around here, and then as you're, like, finishing up on this side, Reyna is led out of the jail here and is, you know, being taken to what seems to be perhaps the, uh, you know, a place to get a meal. So she's being led away. What do you want to do? So, there doesn't seem to be, like, an actual physical armory in that area, correct? Not that you've seen. Like, an armory? Right armory? Seen. Like, with weapons and like stuff? Like, where they, like, yeah, like, where they, you know, where they, like, keep, like, stock of, like, like, extra stuff, you know? Like, because they've got to have, like, not, like, a full-fledged armory, armory, but, like, yeah, where have, they like, keep their weapons with, like, extra stuff, yeah. Sure. As of right now, without opening any of these doors, you do not see it. Right. Okay. Um, this is just again. This is a cursory yeah. look. As far as I know, just we're not opening look. doors okay. because that gets to the point of like, hey, why would yeah, that no, no, door no, open? I don't want to open any doors. Yeah. Mm -mm. I just want <laughs> to do double checks. It was the rain and the wind. It of was the wind. <laughs> Are there like yeah. visible torches on walls or like? On uh, the so walls or the anything? yeah, actually, here let me. I'll I'll do this for this one here at night. Yes, there are torches that will light the, the courtyard here, and the reason you could see into the uh, the barracks portion previously is that it does seem that there is some soft lighting in each of the locations. Uh, like, you can see it out the second floor of the towers and things okay. like that, right? There is some light that spills out. You saw it in the, the jail area. There was some, some light that spilled out into the courtyard as well. Uh, it seems, again, that most of these, most of the people that we've seen so far, they're human, right? They're just mm -hmm. human dudes, which means they require light to see. Uh, some of the, the torches are a bit low, especially out in the courtyard in the in the dampness and the rain. Uh, but they are still burning. They do provide light. But if I remember correctly, at the gate before uh, Reyna came in, one of the guards said that they had a dragon something. Uh, right? Yeah, so they said dragon L. Okay, they had a dragon L. Yeah, which... I don't know if anyone dragon. knows what it's a dragon that, that takes the L. is. Yeah, it's a dragon that takes it's the what? L. what? Uh, dragon that takes the L. Or it's okay. going to hand us well, the L. Yeah. Us the <laughs> Either way. Okay, well, mm. um, on that note, in her mind, she thinks, like, oh, like, dragons. So she's trying to keep an eye out for, like, an armory, but also for anything that, like, seems kind of unusual, like growling or stuff, like the stable. Yeah. Uh, there, there seem to be some interesting sounds coming from the stable. But again, we're at the point where, like, you didn't have overly much time, right? You got to study yeah. the gate controls, do a quick cursory move around, and now Reyna's being led away. 
So like, I assume that these two are we're, we're going around in a very tight little wedge. I just imagine. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, I'll. Yeah. Uh, I, I can. I. I assume as the person holding the spell, I can. I kind of know where they are. Like I can sense them or see them at least. Nope. Not really. No, not at all. No? You just know that the okay. concentration is still on. You don't know. Okay. Like you'll know when the invisibility drops, but that's mm. about it. But I know they're there, so I can kind of keep an eye out for footprints and, like, noises. Right, so, like, you, for you guys, okay. I assume there's, like, some small whispering, be like, hey. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because yeah. that's what I'm at. Okay, yeah. so I would whisper and say, can you, can you two see in the dark? Yes. We have dark vision. They're, they're all humans. So can I. We turn the lights out. We put all the torches out. When we're ready, we put, we turn the lights out. And they'll be helpless. This is exactly a light switch. Yes. <laughs> There's not, but you have a magical friend who can put torches out at a distance. Oh. So right. I can't do them all at once, but I can do them wherever we're going, and I can do them pretty quickly as well. And if we position a few of us around initially, we can... We can... We can literally blind them. extinguish them and blind yeah. them, yes. I'm marking can... the torch locations, because you wouldn't know. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I go... I go, um... Should we split up into, like, you know, like, the quadrants, like... I go on we one side. Because yes. we can do that, open the gate. Anybody coming to get it, maybe we have, I don't know, you and Svartle at the north at least, so anybody wise enough to run and check the gate, because they'll hear it. You can stop them in the dark. And then when Darrett and, you know, the, the remaining mercenaries arrive, we can just relight the torches. By that point, a lot of them should be dead. What do we use to take the torches out? Because the torches, I'm assuming, they're not just like basic baby torches they're no, like they're, they're like hefty they're sized like, yeah hefty yeah. size i mean because like obviously i'm not thinking like oh yeah if i just push them over they're like they're good no uh, i mean you, you would have to like smother them or magically snuff them yes okay i, I assume I, I don't know what the two of you have in your packs but you have, yeah if you have anything you can smother them with or i can run around look. and do them myself i he can't do like them heavy once, cloth but... or leather would do yeah. pretty good um, I've got a bedroll. Or you could attempt to, yeah, that would, that would work. like, douse them in the mud, but that would require moving them. And remember, yeah, once I've an got... object leaves your body, it is visible. Yeah, I've got a bedroll. Like, a, I don't know if that would work. You could attempt to, to use your bedroll. Yeah, that's a big I would big assume that since my bedroll is cloth. on my person and it's attached to my pack, it's on your I'm, like, I'm wet. Yeah, it's like, wet. Everything, everything you have right now is just wet. Yeah, dredge. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, you know, say I have my, I'll use my bedroll to, like, smother it, like, just stamp it out right on top that of would it. Work. I can, I can do them magically, of course. Svartle, well, yeah, but, like, I don't to... think you could do, like, all of them, so that's why I was, like... No, but if there's four here that we can see, you two are at one each. Yes. I do one, I can run over to the other and do the other one. Sounds good. And while I'm doing that... One of you gets to work on the gate control. The other one of you, you know, protects them. That works. You know how you lick your you... fingers and put out a candle wick? I want to lick, oh, my, I lick my entire hands. I lick my mage hand. hand. <laughs> my mage hand. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so you guys begin to to prep that as you move about here. Um, yeah. okay. So where do you guys end up? Uh, I'll stay I would this end one towards, down here. I was just going to say, I would be next to, close to a gate control, because we have to get the gates open. Okay. Um, okay. I want to be by, to um, the yeah, yeah, to the north. I want to be able to, to jailbreak if we can. Okay. Yeah, and so as you guys kind of move around again, this is a lot of movement, so I want one more set of stealth checks with advantage. Okay. Because you guys have been kind of coasting on the, the last ones here for a while. Nice. 12, 14, 14, and 20. Not bad. Yeah, okay, cool. So you kind of, again, utilizing the edges of the walls here, maneuvering slowly around, and uh, using the rain to your advantage to kind of cover the sound of your, your boots uh, and the prints that are made here. Rain is being led across. We get, like, a brief moment kind of zoomed in to where Razik is now in uh, a jail cell. Uh, there's a man across from him. He's younger, but he's, he's definitely got a lot of stubble here. Uh, and his eyes are a bit deepened and hollowed. His, he definitely hasn't seen much sleep. And then on the other side, you're tapped on the shoulder immediately through the bars by a small Kender woman. She goes, oh, hi, I'll go Dutch sticker. And you are? Um, R Rizik. Oh, Rizik, what a mm. lovely name. That is fantastic. Love that for you. Um, hi, 
uh, that over there, that the man, that's my cousin. His name is Flannel. Uh, he's very kind. Don't even worry about it. The torture that he said that he did for me was basically just a tickle. Well, that's good. Um, how did you end up in here? Oh, well, I am a famous explorer and avoider of fowl. The birds, not the deeds. And, uh... Well, I wanted to explore, and so I stood outside the gate, asserted my dominance, and said, I will explore this outpost. They then captured me, took my weapon, and threw me into a cage. But that's okay, I got to meet my cousin, which I haven't met in a very, very long time. Wait, who, who's your cousin? Oh, Flannel, right there, and she keeps pointing, oh, right, yeah. she keeps pointing at the, the dragon army captain. <laughs> you, you're related to him? Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> can I just look over at the guards and just like ask? Yeah, Is he, that he's right? scribbling down and he's just shaking his head. All right. I mean, a bit of a strange decision to explore an outpost, isn't it, of all things? Well, I like to explore everything. Gotta know the ins and outs of things. Did you see it being taken by the dragon army, or did you know they were here, or...? What's a dragon army? Um... What your cousin's a member of. Flannel, are you part of a dragon army? And you didn't tell me. I could see dragons and you didn't let me know. For the last time, my name is Ardlick Vance, not Flannel. She goes, oh, shh, Flannel, I would know my cousin's name. <laughs> Keep it down, Flannel, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shut um... up in there or I'll start your torture early. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, did you want to explore this place too? Um, not not really. No, I was I was captured by um the the dragon army. In fact, oh, that is unfortunate. That they captured my hoopak, my poor dear. Mm. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Your what? <laughs> Your uh, hoopak? Uh, a hoopak. He's yes, alive? it's my uh, spear sling staff. You know, it's part of every Kender's arsenal when they leave home. I, I've ne I've never met a Kendall or a Kender, sorry. Get it right, why don't you, huh? <laughs> uh, this is I'll I'll show this now. This is what a, a Kender looks like. They're very oh. small. They're very halfling esque. Uh, a Hupak is a long spear staff sling that they carry, a customary weapon for them. Hi, they stole okay. it. Put it somewhere. Don't even know where. <laughs> Flanna won't even tell me. Your own cousin wouldn't tell you. That's I terrible. I will families for the last time. My name is Ardlick Vance. Fuck, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Really stupid. And he's going to go stomping out of the room in a huff. Uh, and yeah. He opens the door here. My, uh, my torch bearing friends, what are we doing? Clap! <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just like, yeah, let that. The signal, that's the right? signal, you know, right? Let that go. That, like, that could be the signal. Sure. Yeah, I Door open. I, will, I, I would. I, I would have got out my uh, my now useless, unused tunic to mm -hmm. smother the first one. Okay. So and the like, first one ready. Yeah, yeah. The first one pff, goes out. Pff. Yeah, and then I'm gonna immediately start running. So I'm still invisible having done that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna run over to this one and while running, kind of stare to the side and see if uh, <laughs> any other torches are going out before I, I become uh, visible. I, right, right when I, I hear the whoosh, yeah. whoosh, I'm like looking out in the direction, I do mine. Yep. Ow. Sardle, hands uh, licked thoroughly. You smother it? <laughs> yeah, I smother it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Down. Ow. Right, yep. I'm gonna run over to this one and just prejudice state, wave my hand and it turns off, but I become visible. Then right? you become visible. Uh, as yep. soon as you do so, the prestidigitation snuffing the flames out here. Uh, and there's shouts from here. It's like, oh, what? What's going on here? What's happening? Where the hell did the lights go? And then the dragon army soldiers draw their blades, each of them alighting with fire. Uh, <laughs> these guys. And so they just hold their own torches in the rain in their hands. <laughs> well, I press on the the fire. In the rain. In the rain. In the Can rain. I smother their torches with my tunic? Okay. Uh, they, it doesn't, it doesn't like give. Ten feet. Yeah, it doesn't give a lot of yeah. it. But the Ardlick Vance will come out here. And say, What's going on? What's happening here? Why are all the torches out? And he's uh, gonna go well, reaching going... for the okay. one that's up here. So I'm gonna give Svartle the first 
reaction as Ardalic also pulls out his longsword uh, and it lights to flame here, giving them a bit of, of light vision around them. So Ardalic, what do you, oh, you do better, as he reaches up for the torch? Smother his light. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I actually wanted to uh, look at his person and see real quick. Can I can I see keys hanging from his belt or anything? Uh, he does have keys hanging from his belt. Uh, you wouldn't know what they go to, but he does no, have, I have keys. No idea. But he I, has do a want, set I just of want two looking keys. for keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got keys. Uh, I mean. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry. He draws a lance that sets to flame. That's mm, fun. Okay. <laughs> Lance. I mean, if that's happening, I, uh, I, I mean, Spartle's got to play Spartle, right? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, he's gonna, he's gonna just hit him with this, with this great axe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just Spartle, you know, that's what he does. You'll go hit with the great axe here and. That is where we'll start the next session. We do have to end a little bit early today to accommodate for one of our players, but that's where we'll begin with Svartle trying to bury an axe into the unsuspecting Ardlick Vance. But thank Flannel, you. please. Flannel, sorry. Flannel, Flannel. <laughs> Flannel. I would know Obviously. my own cousin's name. All right. <laughs> Flannel. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I do appreciate it. And, uh, well, we'll be off for a little bit because Connor's leaving us for two weeks. No. Forever. Uh, Forever. so enjoy this episode when it does air. And then hold on tight to your, your pants. Cause Our ho flannels. Hopefully we have something in the interim. Maybe I'll make something up for next week that we just play in a one-off or something. He'll just like play that. all of our characters. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Goodbye. Bye. 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 He just said we're replaceable.